And we're live. Hello out there in Twitch, YouTube, and Periscope land. If you've struggled with audio previously, hopefully you struggle less now. We've, we've, we've solved a few stupid problems. The number of things you can turn up or down physically, digitally, <laughs> and spiritually is just <laughs> remarkable. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, anybody who's listened to these before and I've been quiet, it's, it's really all on me. I was vibrating at the wrong level of energy the whole time. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know OBS like actually looked at that, but I got my... I mean, this is this is the price you pay, though. Like, you want to get people on the stream from various spectra, uh, mm-hmm. and this this is the price you pay. Like, it's it's I blame I blame Tesla and Edison for not getting current straight for transdimensional streaming. Like, you know, it, on one hand, how could they have known? But on the other hand, they should have known. It feels like if they had really been passionate about their craft, which yeah, I feel like at least Tesla is often presented as being. Sure. Then they would have figured. But. Yeah. The myth, the myth and the man rarely align. Right. <laughs> anyway. Hello everybody. Welcome back to Crusader Kings three, which, which that had very little to do with. Um, <laughs> when last we Nonsense. left our uh, leaders, <laughs> we could reform our religions to reflect uh, new age spiritualism. That's a good point. I mean, and that may, that may be on the menu. Um, if we had been able to begin that process by nine twelve, I would have been quite impressed with us. Oh, uh, for sure. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hide my stream so I'm not for myself, so I'm not seeing three of that. Uh, I'm going to make sure I can see the chat should anybody stop by. Looks like we're live everywhere. Twitch still acts funny for some people, but if anyone tells me they're having problems on Twitch, I'll direct them to one of the multiple other places we're streaming. And then the archive shows up fine on Twitch, which is what most people watch anyway. So we should be good. Excellent. I'm, I'm recalling, struggling to recall uh what was going on last time i had uh subjugated biarmia uh so that's right i have a high chiefess i think uh tadane tadane uh who is uh you know sort of in charge of biarmia directly i am uh, gonna try and keep under my thumb um you had acquired quite a lot of territory uh in luki and you now have a um, high chiefdom title to that effect. The war in Luki went well. The war in Vologda went well. Um, I haven't disbanded my armies because there was an imminent peasant uprising, and there were also some fairly fairly damaging raiders in the area. So we're we're the armies are still on the march, and I'm like wealthy enough that it it has like it's not costing me anything. It simply slowed the 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 rate at which I'm accumulating wealth. So it's not an urgent problem to solve. Um, I got two yes. of two of the best love letters ever penned in English. That did happen last time. <laughs> That's right. I guess in canon they're not penned in English, but you know, but the game penned them that way. Right, right. God, the they were good. For us. Indeed, indeed, which is which is very very appreciated. The best localization since the Yakuza games. Um, <laughs> Your broad shoulders remind us all of a furry. Cat. <laughs> I just felt so seen. Um, so what are, what are your goals for this session? If you, if you can know them at this point, that is a very good question. I am doing all right on things like troop count. So probably I will be relatively inert in the early going here as I wait for my armies to replenish. Once they do, I have targets in Estonia and de jure Sweden, uh, that I can try to, to kind of acquire here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably not going to prioritize moving into Sapmi, which is the sort of northern uh, Ukanusko kingdom, uh, directly above the De Jure kingdom of Finland. But um, yeah, that, I feel like that's kind of my two things. I, I could be at any point at war with Estonia, Kurland, Bergslagen, Ostergotland, Vastergotland, or Denmark. Uh, Less likely that I'd be at war with Gwaladat or uh, Arigitje or Halogaland, but not impossible. You've certainly got a few things that you will eventually need to take from me when you get Imperial ambitions over in the army. Sure. I will need to take um, the county of Oof. Uh, Anislina 
from your fellow Novgorod vassal, High Chief Despierga, who used to be your boss. No, please don't. Here. Um, <laughs> Not yeah. Verga, anyone but Verga. I actually need to take some of the uh, uh, more consequential holdings of her as Narva and Tartu as part of the Kingdom of Estonia as well. Eventually. So yeah, I, I could be going up against uh, your uh, liege lord. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've sort of been looking for an excuse to up jump anyway, because my liege, I'm, I, I rival my liege lord in terms of resources, land, etc. So the time may, uh, the time is not ripe, but it may be ripening. <laughs> you, you have 5,000 troops to call. He has 1,991 troops to call. And his only ally has eleven twenty-five to call, so you could probably steamroll uh, if you could only get a cost of spell eye worth pursuing. Yeah, that might be the big F, actually. Yeah. In well, fact. and then there's also like the uh, county of Vodi. Uh, will technically belong to the de jure Russian Empire, uh, which is you know your sort of home soil de jure empire currently held by me so sure maybe trade onega for vodi onega being the uh county level name that one that i was talking about that you can take from sure to spirga but yeah uh maybe maybe this will be the session that king kurapelg of novgorod uh you know sort of finds himself toppled king kurapel of novgorod yeah <laughs> He's a rapacious villain. He's also, I had not noticed, both trusting and sadistic, which is one of those very evocative combinations of traits. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure exactly. I mean, you know, in game, they're basically independent things that just, you know, change the stats slightly. But the, but boy, that paints a picture. Mm -hmm. Well, and they, they will be checked for how they're going to respond to certain situations. So they won't necessarily, it won't be like the game is checking to see, like, oh, this person is both of these things, so they have unique behavior, but any given one could be checked in any given event. And sure. in some cases, there might be an event that would check for both, in which case, I imagine it's just a coin toss. <laughs> right. Uh, but um, what that actually does is, despite it being relatively rudimentary in terms of modeling psychology, it's remarkably complex in modeling behavior over time. Right. And feels deceptively human. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. When it's irrational, it's irrational in a way that also feels very human. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've been meaning to check. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the um, Aglabids in North Africa have managed to hold on to, and I think even slightly expand their territory, uh, despite being a foreign culture to the rest of Christendom, Maghrebi and a foreign religion, Orthodox Christian, to the rest of North Africa. That's an interesting happening on the map for sure. Yeah, a, a fun and interesting little little thing. They, they seem to be having some success with conversion as well. Hmm. Uh, also, so, it must be said, uh, Malik Ahmad II, uh, Ibn Muhammad, uh, rivals both of us for beard glory. It's a very different style, but uh, it's, it's, his beard is of an infinite oh, yeah. density. No object can penetrate it, and no light can escape it, I think. It's a, a, a neutron beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well said. All right, are we ready to start the clock? I think so. I'm pretty much just going to be huddling up, trying not to stress out my king. Okay. <laughs> we established before that there's no way for me to say, get on and revolt already, you revolting peasants. I just kind of have to wait for that shoe to drop. I, as far as I know. Okay. Yeah, you're pretty much just seeing if it happens. Oh, it's actually the military power is only 20%, so that's probably... Oh, you can send an ultimatum at any time. How does this work? So... No, no, no. They can send an ultimatum. Oh, they can send reason. an ultimatum. Understood. Because they are 100% discontented. Not sending an ultimatum is because they know they'd be crushed. I have an understanding. Okay. They're going to be no they less likely to be crushed. <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 sure. I understand. Got it, got it, got it. Understood. Okay, cool. Let's do this thing. Let, let history unfold. <laughs> And the soul still burns. <laughs> my acquaintance Marky died. <laughs> my, acquaint sorry, by, had... 
hmm? far too much passion and power in your voice <laughs> to be an accurate replication <laughs> of Soul Calibur. Though. They do generally sound quite bored. We say Soul Calibur stuff when the dogs are wrestling a lot. You know, <laughs> a tale of souls and swords eternally retold. Okay, here we go. To the abhorrent Jarl Helgi, I'm often abhorrent, I've noticed. We've been burdened with your oppressive laws far too long. No more, we are done paying your taxes. Once your coffers dry up and your larders are empty, you will wish you would treat us more fairly, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so I'm not going to grant a tax lien. Uh, a peasant's lot is to serve their lord. Uh, let's, let's dance. War were declared. I am going to eventually... Uh, you'll have eventually you'll have said that enough that I am going to think that's what the button says, <laughs> even though it does not. You're not. I know you're not a big uh, Matt Groening guy, but that is that is one of the better lines from Futurama. I don't know if you're familiar. Uh, I can start the clock by I the way. Think, yeah. Basically, they 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 you know uh, two of the main characters decide to join the army, and they're like, "But this is just you know, it's just a contract, right? Like, it's not like we actually have to fight." And the guy goes, "Of course not, unless of course war were declared." And then a bell goes off, and they go, "What was that?" And he goes, "War were declared." Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I have I think technically seen every episode of Futurama at some point or another, but I remember <laughs> relatively little of it. I really enjoy I the idea of technically seeing something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, whether or not I was fully conscious for the whole thing. Sure. Yeah. Um, Hold on, I captured a valuable hostage. Um, oh, is this is this over? <laughs> I may have just killed their their leader in the first battle. To the brash Helgi, may your humors rot in your living body. Yada yada yada. I know when I'm defeated. Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, I guess the peasant. I think the war's over. <laughs> yeah, I think you captured him in the field of battle. So I I, I blitzed that Krieg. Okay, um, I guess we continue. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, no, I did, I did watch all of Futurama. I don't remember how much of it I fell asleep during or not during the time that I was streaming it uh, well after the fact. Uh, but it's one of those things where I remember enjoying it. I don't remember a lot about it and I'm disinclined from going back and trying to watch it again because I worry that it will not hold up very well. (laughs) Sure. What I, I do remember. I think, um, I mean, I haven't rewatched it in a long time either, but I, my impression certainly is that it would be very uneven on a rewatch mm-hmm. like that there would be stuff that held up really well some of the kind of you know dark sci-fi stuff and some of this i remember some of this satirical stuff being on point maybe that's a totally false memory and it just seemed very edgy when i was a teenager uh mm-hmm. and I, <laughs> I don't know maybe the stuff that would hold it better would just be the like goofy wordplay which is kind of where it always really excelled but i don't know yeah. well and like i honestly generally enjoyed the show more when it was like taking itself and its characters if not like seriously then like on their own terms totally like, totally takes as real absolutely it, um, it benefited i recall from being a bit serialized it wasn't that true like hard reset sitcom thing like the simpsons was right, right. so some things could stick yeah that's uh my wife and i have been uh re slash just plain watching uh avatar the last air oh oh so, oh so good she has seen a lot of it, but like out of order and definitely hadn't seen all of it. So that's a show that I certainly the first time around consumed like it was like a, a non serialized show, like just caught an episode here and there, which which like works OK. But it is definitely it is definitely a serialized story, right? Each yeah. episode picks up pretty exactly where the last left off. Yeah. And each has a conflict and a resolution. And plus it's the you know sort of climactic two parters. Totally, totally. But it definitely is yeah okay let's shall we start the clock oh yes i did not mean to keep us from doing so no i I didn't either (laughs) well well, i I thought you were watching the baby well well, i thought you were watching the baby (laughs) well then who's watching the baby (laughs) i have a lot of raiders here goodness goodness gracious uh that'll Especially if you're relatively wealthy compared to your neighbors. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> which which I am. Uh, sprouting interest. A merchant has sent me samples of seeds. Plants, she claims, are good for health and mind. I must admit I have little experience in nurturing plants, but uh, how hard could it be? Uh, I could start a private... Yeah, I, have some... <laughs> <laughs> I want to retire and be a farmer. That seems like an easy job. 
Um, uh, okay. Though, the, the guy who had my job before I had my job took it as a like retirement job. It was just like, ah, oh, high school English teacher. That sounds easy. Oh, God. <laughs> and so when I went in to interview for my current position in the middle of October, like a month and a half into the school year, uh, the first thing that the um, the president uh, of the school system that was uh, looking to hire me said was, well, we have an English teacher right now, but he really wants to quit. <laughs> 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 which i appreciated their candor but it was one of the funniest things i've ever heard that's incredible <laughs> um okay so what can i do i can sell the seeds for 25 wealth which is you know not nothing but i don't especially urgently need mm -hmm. or i can okay. try to cultivate them in which case i have a decent chance an okay chance of getting this herbalist trait which gives me a medium boost to disease resistance which at the age of 60 to 63 is very good uh yeah, or just no, plus one learning good. Um, or, you know, there's a 17% chance that nothing happens. Overwhelmingly likely, I just get one learning. So this is an easy choice. It's garden time. The seeds refuse to grow. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we... The thing that I like about this, if I could just, uh, you know, praise the aesthetics here, is that there is no text <laughs> with just the title. No, the outcome is a blank space where something may have once been... Yeah, the subject line is used to grow, and the body of the message is EOM. Do you wish to send this message with no text in the body? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, that was a that was a lovely like bit of a, like a uh, King of Dragon Pass kind of thing. Extremely. Yes. Yes. Big big King of Dragon Pass energy. All right. Well, here we go. What the a only good... difference, of course, is that I we didn't have a. Uh, drunk troublemaker trying to convince us that uh it was either our neighbors or our women's fault because the seeds didn't grow. <laughs> right well we just have a well i don't think that's what this is uh is it love oh, oh boy my paramour uh, i can scarce remember what my life was like before a rognida declared her feelings for me those days seem so bleak so dreary what, uh, but with her by my side, everything and anything suddenly seems possible. I wish we could go on like this forever, but deep down, I know I must make my choice. Am I brave enough to give in to my feelings, or must I shut my heart to Ragnera forever? Uh, becomes my so soulmate. What the hell does that mean? It's a, a particular kind of relationship. So if you click to the second tab of your character sheet, you have uh, relationships, and she'll go under lovers, and then there will be an opinion modifier between the two of you. Gotcha. Uh, mutual modifier uh, that would be soulmate. Um, I also would like to remind our potential viewers here, this is she of the excellent love poetry. <laughs> yes, if that wasn't clear. Um, my And also, or continue. No, I was simply going to say that I'm not made of stone. And this is the woman who said <laughs> that my, my shoulders were broad like that of a furry cat. And yeah, yeah, you were saying um, that. And also, I was going to point out that the uh, little exclamation point on a scroll near your wife's left elbow uh, is indicative of the secret that you know about her, that she is, uh, and has been for years now, sleeping with your son. Son and, and heir. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so it is... Uh, it is not exactly uh, an unprompted bit of faithlessness on your part. Cer most certainly not. And I mean, you know, <laughs> love can bloom on the battlefield. We're longtime co-workers. <laughs> um, I did not sit down today thinking I was going to be hearing about uh, Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> but here I am. I got sour news for you, Jack. <laughs> He, well, all right. I mean, I'm, I, I just kind of want to see how the mechanic works. And it also, I think, makes a lot of sense as a role play decision, mm -hmm. given uh, given that 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 Jarl Helgi, though, though he's had some glories in life, has been, I think it is fair to say, unlucky in love up until now. Uh, so, yeah, soulmate, soulmate city. Here we go. My nephew, uh, yeah. my nephew Ofig was captured. Meanwhile, but but by all means, finish the thought, and then then we'll deal with this this poor little gent. 
soulmate city is a is the phrase I think this is my first time hearing, and my brain really wants to misremember it as a bare naked lady song. <laughs> I I will not disabuse you of this fantasy. <laughs> so High Chieftain Iloji has captured. I mean, this is like this might be a you problem, kid. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Look, I can't bail everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it literally harms me to do that because I'm greedy. Uh, All right. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, we'll let this play out. It worked out fine last time. <laughs> um, I don't think this will come back to bite me. Starting the clock. Surely this is fine. A uh, reminder to anybody watching that last time I thought it was going to be fine when my son got imprisoned and he got executed. <laughs> Yeah, that's I don't I don't really see how those two events are related. <laughs> I can still arrest the guy who did it, but I only have a thirteen percent chance of success. And if I uh, I don't, he and other disgruntled vassals may rise up in rebellion. Sure, which you don't which you don't want. So this one's called Intruder Crash. I where am I? What's going on? I peer into the darkness, my eyes adjusting. Rod, there is someone by my bedroom window. I scramble out of bed, reaching for the dagger on the nightstand. Oh, God, am I about to kill her? No, okay, good. Um, the intruder grabs my <laughs> arm, tugs, and I spin around, sinking the blade. No, I am. Oh, God, sinking the blade deep into her stomach. She looks at me for an endlessly long moment, her lips moving without a sound. Then she falls to the ground. Helgi, are you all right? By the window stands none other than Rogneda, blade in hand, ready to defend me. I throw myself into her arms, and she holds me tight. Okay, Jesus Christ. I thought she was visiting as a surprise. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is the official the official soulmate situation is, is okay. So we, we killed someone together, which is very romantic. I thought <laughs> this went star crossed immediately. Yeah, uh, no, uh, as as Bonnie and Clyde uh teach us <laughs> couples murdering people together. The couple that stab uh, someone in the stomach together stay to get, stays together, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Tale as old as time. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna start the clock. Yeah, I was really worried about a a, a star crossing there, uh, for certain. Oh, my nephew was released without my having to do anything. Oh, good. Uh, let's see. Um, war I was a party to and did not at all remember. Oh, right, <laughs> we 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 uh, scrolled all the way over to Uralpal, uh, in the east at the end of last session to find where this was taking place. That's right. Um. I did not participate in it at all. It has concluded. Uh, and none of it actually has any particular uh, implications for me. So, <laughs> Well, there's that then. Uh, I'm pausing. I have nine wars I can declare. I should probably get on that. Time's a waste. And actually, yeah, let's pause again and let me just take a quick look at my my war docket. Um, King Toon of Estonia. That's ambitious. White Roos. Eh. Now you think that's doable? He's got 2,000 troops. His allies have 1,500 and 2,000. It'd be an even fight. Uh, and if you called me in, which I think you can do. I think we're still allied. No, we're not. We're not still allied. That's fine. Aren't we? I thought we had two folks that... Oh, yeah, no, we are. It just doesn't show up on your character sheet. It only shows up on mine. That's weird. For me, anyway. Hmm. Uh, where do I see yeah, that? Uh, that would be on your character sheet under diplomacy. Everything with crossed blue flags over it is an ally. Got it. And everything with facing white doves is a truce. Yeah, King Petri of Finland. Yeah. Apparently, my truce with or my alliance with you does not show up on your character sheet for me. Uh, when I look at. You. Uh, but in any case, yes, uh, I could come and help you with my. 4,000-ish troops if we needed to. I would say, though, that where the King of Estonia is concerned, I don't think he holds anything that is in the Empire of Russia. Mm, so sure, like, It sure. would all be stuff that I would be taking back for me. Eventually. Understood. Uh, which I do not think have some. Uh, the other option here is Vologda. Who I could straight up, could straight up subjugate. 
Well, so subjugate, it means that he would become your fast. Right, right. So it's usually efficient if they hold a lot of two counters and get it all at once. Sure. But Vologda here only holds two counties. So, you know, up to you. But certainly something you should take. Um, Ustyug, uh, Kolmogory, Apolia, White Rus are all places. And even, what's this, Mark Yuba. Nope, Mark Yuba is technically part of Volga Ural. That's just to say you couldn't take it, just that it wouldn't help you sure. realize your imperial ambitions soon. Uh, yeah, you have almost everybody that you share a border with other than Samogitia, Estonia, and Yi are things that are in your eventual de jure empire of Russia. And if you wanted to... Uh, mess with Samogitia in particular uh, most of what they've got is in the southern Baltic Empire oh well so fair game. yeah totally the other question I can now create the duchy of Vespia is there a reason not to do that yes because if you create the duchy of Vespia then it is a foregone conclusion that when you die uh, since you have more than one living son uh, one of them will be the duke of Vespia got it now that can still happen under confederate partition because under confederate partition new titles can be created uh for the um like otherwise non-inheriting sons i guess would be the way to put it sure um but it would i guess just kind of all depend <laughs> i don't know it's super unhelpful yeah thanks <laughs> That 300 prestige is pretty good. Um, yeah. Um, open, uh, if you click on your uh, realm crown over there on the right, the green crown at the top of the oh, this guy. Yeah. menu lists, you can click over the succession tab, and it should actually give you a pretty good idea of who's getting what when you die. Okay. Tikvin yeah, Vespia. Yeah, so Duchy of Vespia seems like it is destined to be created when you die. Anyway, so I may as well get the benefit. Right, and then you can keep it to yourself for now if you like, or you can delegate it, in which case you'll be splitting those territories off. But you could make sure that they, it, you know, the benefit sure. that, to that would be making sure that it goes to somebody. Sure. All right, let's do this thing. There are limits on that. You can't give your primary heir stuff that their siblings stand to inherit. Right, right. Still alive. Well, we'll just we'll hang on to it for now. But it exists, and now, oh boy, now I can declare any kind of war on whatever ill-advised combatant I desire, um, which is always yeah, which is always good. To I know you're old, but if you do manage to get the crown of Novgorod, uh, the kingdom, before you die, that will keep both Vespia and Luki under the same. Uh, high-level realm umbrella. Your king title will pass to your primary heir along with whatever else uh, your primary gets, and then uh, your other, you know, heirs who get lesser stuff will still be vassals of your primary. Sure. That is the reason you're done for a king with a title in the state. I don't think I can declare, I mean, I can't declare, I don't have a cost of spell eye to declare war on my liege directly, I don't think. I think you have um, a plot. Got it, okay. I think. Plot, plot, plot. There's a murder scheme. Uh... You could start a claimant faction. Is that how that would work? So let's see. Start claimant faction. I guess you have to pick a claimant. Uh, can you pick yourself is the real question, or your heir for that? It's a good question. Let's Doesn't look that. like you have a claim okay. of pre existing. That means go. Understood. 
I will say this is something that I have not done in this sure. iteration of this game. So, I mean, declaring war on Virgo would be fun and profitable. Um, there's something more delicious about her just working for me, but <laughs> yeah. But the title can probably also declare war for on your king for Onega, the taking from High Chief Desvirga. Uh, I outnumber uh, the Kingdom of Novgorod by about a thousand troops. It looks like it'd be a doable thing. So you're saying. I don't know of a mechanical way to make those two wars one war, but you're saying, like, therefore she has to fight a war on two fronts and this will probably end quickly? Uh, I don't know how much uh, High Chief Desvirga would be involved, honestly. And I sure. Think it would kind of be up to her. Oh, she's uh, she's super uh, involved if I'm declaring war on her <laughs> um, to, sure, to get the chief to Mavrusa. What I mean is, is that if I'm declaring for Onega, technically I'm declaring war on King Kilrapelg. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Uh, but the territory is under the auspices of High Chief Desvirga. Understood. Chief of Understood. And so I don't know how she would. All right, I'm doing this. Um, let's do I'll this. I'll do mine too. There we go. I've declared war on King Kirapelg. But uh, do give me a moment because I do not have a nearby rally. Watch that. What does this say here? That this is a, a crime, rightful imprisonment. Does that mean I am I am committing a crime by declaring war on her? Uh, maybe. <laughs> okay. Oh, what does it say? High Chief Desvirga of Novgorod loses. I oh, know that she is, or no? Yeah, I don't know. Opinion. Her liking me less. Clear enough. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm, sure, I'm yeah, on board. I don't know who is committing the crime here, though. Sure. I mean, since she's not doing anything, it's presumably me. Um, I guess so, yeah. Is that is that why it's not letting me? Like it's I can't click declare war. Oh, uh in that case I do not know. Uh you have the prestige for it. I guess the uh crown authority of the Kingdom of Novgorod could be high enough that it prohibits this kind of war. But I can't check that. Can I check that? Presumably, uh, if you were to go to, again, your little realm crown there, okay. you might be able to see the chieftain of Luki you have. That. Oh, yeah, he's at four, I think, if you clear the little window that you have picked up here. Oh, I see, yeah. Tribal four. So four is... Um, tribal rulers or no you know i don't i don't know the difference i wish i could be clearer yeah it's a little weird uh, but, uh, but yeah there's no language there in particular i mean i definitely can't click it yeah yeah Goofy. i think that's the most likely thing. okay but well sorry that our our strategy is not quite as elegant then mm -hmm. but Well, that's fine. I can still wreck shop, I think. Is there something else I could do that would be helpful from the list that you see before you? Estonia. The list I see before. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I think for the most part. Um, yeah, it's weird that it lists that you can declare war on her. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess it doesn't mean that all costs of Spell Eye are uh, created equal, right? Maybe it's like right, right. that would be different. But, uh, no, nah, I don't think there's much you can do. Uh, I will just secure my uh, territory up to the Severe River. Oh, this powerful vassal expects an appointment. And the slot that makes sense for him would be the slot that my soulmate has, so that's cool. Well, I mean, how upset is he about it? <laughs> Um, I mean, he likes me fine. Eh, 
yeah, that's not a big deal. He is markedly better at it than she is. Uh, but uh, well, then that might be a reason to. <laughs> yeah. Twenty-two versus twelve. Ooh. I would probably be like, hey, honey, don't you think maybe you work too hard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like it seems like what needs to happen. Um, how do I find this lovely gentleman? Uh, there's a search feature. There is. You can also sort by uh, ability level. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, by sense. clicking on the little icons up there, and that should put him nearish the top. You assorted in. Why is he not up there? Maybe he's the wrong religion? Because this is chaplain. Oh, that could be. But no, he's Slovianskin. You're Slovianskin, right? Yeah, you're right. Is she Slovianskin? Yeah. Weird. Am I like locked out of doing stuff for some weird reason? I don't know what's going on. Um, well, it's the fact that he doesn't appear there. Is weird. Yeah. Is strange. I'm experiencing some weirdness. Um, let's see. Your son, vassal, and champion. Um, I suppose it's possible that that's not a position that men can hold. Oh, that's actually totally possible. I think so. I think I think it did mention that Vidunia is, has to be a, a woman. Now that you mention it, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's what's up. Um, but his book learning doesn't really do him much good in any of these other positions. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, you you can you can just keep expecting a position for a minute, I guess. But um... <laughs> wait with faded. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I have stopped time long enough. Um, but I do want to pick a war. All right. Let me try one more thing real quick. Um, but, oh no! I know why you couldn't declare those before. You still have levies raised. That's exactly why. Oh, I'm so dumb. Okay. Uh, I only noticed it because I was like, wow, they already have almost like two thousand <laughs> troops in Vodi. You were totally right. Oh, I, my apologies to whoever was watching and losing their mind over that. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said anything in the chat, but again, I'm also speaking to people in the future who will watch this and lose their minds. Um, okay, there's there's that big, juicy, non-blacked-out declare war button. Okay. Now we have the war music. Okay. That's exactly what the war music sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> it's uncanny. I, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, this is me. <laughs> Entire choir. <laughs> okay, let's do this thing. Yes, Lai. Yeah, I'm sick. Yeah, good. I have paused to issue my move orders. Onega shall be mine. No, no, not that one. The other one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only place I know of in this game where I can like zoom pretty far in and have two identically named counties on the screen at the same time. Like currently that is the case yeah that's pretty wild <laughs> yeah there's the tribe of onega up in biarmia and then there's the county of onega with the tribe of anislin is my best guess uh here in it's like southern finland south western southeastern east west go far enough one becomes the other it's true that's deep i told you i was vibrating on a higher energy <laughs> whoa <laughs> uh, i i'm trying to remember what we needed it for but i was trying like hell to find rose water somewhere in the city and uh so stopped by whole foods and found something that said rosewater on it but uh it turns out to have been like 
there is rose water in this and the real draw according to the language on the bottle was that it was vormag water (laughs) (laughs) which is a compound word uh taking the uh first syllables of vortex and magnetized (laughs) so i don't know what that means in this context but somewhere in this house there is to this day a partial bottle of rose scented vormag water that's incredible there's a just like regular old distilled bottled water that that i used to see on shelves in california that is called like it sounds like like a like a kingdom hearts midquel like it's called like starfire protocol or something <laughs> like <laughs> Let, let's be clear that sounds far too dignified for a kingdom hearts interquel there are no there are no fractions in it for a start yeah right yeah uh, the the uh, caldwell tanner joke kingdom hearts show your work <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, by the way, I now have enough uh, enough. Uh, what do you call it? Prowess. Prowess. No. Uh, renown. No, to uh, renown. to uh, start on a legacy path here. Um, so, I mean, certainly the family legacy so far has been martial. It's been kind of a warfare. It's been a warlike yes. lineage. Um, the names of some of these are amazing. Generational belligerence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very real thing. Um, <laughs> noble veins are less of a real thing. That's that's that gets a, that gets a side eye from me, dog. Um, <laughs> As well, it should. Erudition. I mean, I guess. Okay, so mechanical question: Does it make more sense to buff you buff yourself where you're already strong, or where you're potentially not so strong? It really depends on what your sort of goals or plans are i find sure I, the other thing i feel like i need to point out here uh, uh, if it's clear to you so that it'll be clear to the viewer as well is that you can buy the as soon as you can afford them like you have to buy them in order mm-hmm. but if you buy one of these at level one it doesn't mean you have to complete that sure 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 sure, sure. Right? of course so of like, course um, if there's something that would be particularly useful to you right now, right now, right now, I say go. Sure. I mean, I'm currently at war and there's no possibility of my not going for generational belligerence. So er- ergo, <laughs> ipso facto, Fair House enough. of Warriors. There you go. Unlocked. We done did it. All right. Good to start the clock whenever you are. Go for it. I was going to start a raid, but the the combined armies are coming in from the north. So I think it's a lot smarter to rally my troops, because if that 999 uh, army got caught by these guys, that would be the ball game for them. Uh, We don't want that. Ooh, that is also a hostile army. All to war. To the amicable King Patriot of Finland, call on you to honor our alliance and join me in peasant uprising. (laughs) <laughs> this is that same guy over way the hell over in like the asian step oh geez um, so yeah sure i accept why not all right oh, i'm pausing some love good you troops Oh, I have a new lifestyle perk I can unlock. Which I think I'm going to continue to use to shore up my ability to deal with stress. Yeah, not a bad idea. Uh, it's, it's, it's been kind of a thing from time to time here in in the Royal Halls of Finland. So, yeah. Okay. Pausing. So actually, let's repause for one second. I've got these mercenaries, the Estonian band and the Lithuanian band. Where are they? How do I see where the where the hell they are? Um, I see their contract. Excellent. Where are they on the map? Excellent question. Yeah. Um. So let's see. Uh. I do not know. I do not know how to find out. 
<laughs> I don't think I have ever kept raider or kept mercenaries for multiple wars. Yeah, my first time too. Yeah. So, hmm. I feel like they would be in the troops that you raised from your capital. Makes sense. So, if you've got an army that you raised in or near your capital, let's say that four thousand man army there with the red banner mm-hmm. rally point. If you click on that, uh, and let's say you combine those two armies, we should actually be able to go looking. Uh, if you, uh, let me remember where the button is, uh, click this split off new army button down at the bottom of that pane, uh, second from the right. No, second from the left, sorry. Uh, split off hired soldiers and special soldiers. That oh, one? I guess that would do it too. Uh, though if it is grayed out, that means there aren't any there. Uh, I was going to bring up a screen that would allow us to look and see. Oh, they are there. That is them. Yeah. yeah. Because the, the gotcha. Okay. There. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. So yeah, they get just raised in your cap. Understood. Okay. Testing the limits of my confident knowledge in this game. Hey, that's 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 the brand. I can't wait until the 1400s and we've run into edge cases and weird spin out scenarios. And I'm just like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just could do this. <laughs> Look, it's never happened to me before that my Miladi has cyber transformed out of the game into my living room. Jeez. I thought you were into this game. I did too. <laughs> All right, I think I think I'm in good shape here. Let's do this thing. Good deal. One day we'll get out of the year 912. <laughs> what a day slash year that'll be. But not right now. Mystical knowledge. I have come across a book describing how ancient devotees used trances and visions of ecstasy to commune with the heavens. It seems a strange practice in our modern age, but perhaps there is something to be learned from them? Interesting. Uh... I wonder what would happen if I imitate their practices or what do other texts say? So your, your options here are to go in half cocked to be like, I read one book. I can, I can try some transcendental shit or to like look into it further. Maybe okay. uh, it says uh, you, you test the mystical practices or you attempt to learn more about the practice through books. Oh, I see. So, I so it's a, learn or it, do. Yeah. Or like learn by doing or yeah. I would go ahead and try it because Meh. Yeah. Um, oh my god. <laughs> Life is cheap. Go for it. Unhealthy relations. My lord, the malady is contagious. Be wary. My court physician Arvo holds me back. The diseased body of a commoner, skin marred by rashes and bumps, rests upon the table. Right, Anyone right. who comes into contact with corpse risks, risks infection. And I was planning an outing that will take me close to the Noral, uh, or close to Noral, hold it to the holy of my vassal Jarl Hrolfo. Who does not like me? Uh, this deceased fellow has smallpox. Cool. Is it called that in this game? Because like obviously there's there's just one catch-all STI called lover's pox. But is is smallpox basically smallpox yeah. in this game? Yes, yes, it is. It is a its own health trait. Delightful. Uh, that seems yes. fine. I, I can't see any problems there. So interestingly, I have three options. I'm going to read them from the bottom up. He will have a dignified burial when you gain 50 piety. The body might t- contain clues as to the disease's origin. Should you be. gain studying corpses for five years <laughs> with a 10% chance of one of your courtiers contracts the disease. Hmm. 10% is or, low for smallpox, let the record show. <laughs> Yeah, it's also too high for me to want to risk an outbreak of smallpox at this stage in the game. <laughs> well, la di da, um, cautious, cautious you. Okay, continue. Okay, just for the record, <laughs> the effects of the health trait smallpox are diplomacy minus two, stewardship minus one, learning minus two, prowess minus ten, fertility minus 25%, health 
critical penalty, dread loss, plus 100%, natural dread, minus 15, attracted opinion, minus 10. Okay, okay. Riddled by scars, <laughs> rashes, and bumps, Tomo will never be the same again, even if he survives his malady. You've made your point, which is that my first question is, should have been, what does smallpox do to a character in this game? <laughs> So my third option here is launch it toward Noral. Oh, for God. Of my vassal, Jarl, oh, for Jarl God. Rolfer, which has the effects someone at his court might contract the disease. He becomes my rival and he loses 40 opinion of me. This is a, this is a bit of a sidebar as regards our, our play, but I'm familiar with stories about this kind of basically, you know, proto germ warfare being practiced is mm-hmm. is there evidence that that really happened or is it more an imposition uh, you know from from the future so as far as i can tell and i have not made an extensive study of it myself the there are chronicles of this having happened right of um bodies being flung via catapult or trebuchet over the walls or something like that's exactly the image I have in my head, and I'm not 100% sure where I got it. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't I couldn't give you a specific place where this is where it happened. We know it. But I do know that there are some chronicles that mention it, and so if we are going to use chronicles as historical evidence, I think we have to say that it is likely that at some point in some place it has happened. Sure. Whether or not it had happened each time it appears in the chronicles in the time and place described... Eh, take it on a case by case basis. Sure, sure. And of course, you would have you would have had people who didn't really know why it worked, just that it worked, which means the odds of infecting yourself while trying to do it are quite high. And yeah, okay. Even, sure. e- even putting aside the pure moral hazard of it, it's a it's a risky maneuver. Right. Well, and the two the two things to remember, right, is that in most parts of Europe and the Mediterranean, North Africa, and the Middle East, the going theory. Since the classical era was uh, that diseases were caused by imbalances in the humors, and so the idea of contagion was that okay, well, something around here is causing an imbalance in the humors, and that was generally taken to be bad air, you know, uh, miasma, uh, and so the idea of well we can throw these bodies that we know had this sickness at our enemies it will worsen the air uh you know in their city which makes total intuitive sense because if you've ever been around a a, you know a a, a person that's been dead for some time it doesn't make the air better that's for sure right and then the idea of course of like bugs being dirty you know uh, again, the logic could vary as to like, well, why are bugs here, but like, oh yeah, the like rot has nasty, creepy crawlies, and sure, you know, we'll guess they're attracted to the bad air. Right. You don't need you totally, air, totally. But there are bugs around. The larger point, if I may paraphrase, being you don't have to, you don't need germ theory to understand that there are ill effects of of you know, being around a body that died of a terrible disease. So like there, there's no reason they couldn't have understood that much and acted accordingly. Um, Right. Yeah. It it, it took germ theory for us to understand the specifics of contagion for individual malady, but you know, uh, the, the imagination for what could communicate disease was inclusive, if perhaps rather broader than a lot of the things that we now consider to be risks fair enough okay so your your options are give this guy a dignified burial didn't i don't know if they said it was a guy give this person a dignified burial uh call it a day i have this portrait okay cool uh or dissect or do a cool germ warfare uh against my own vassal uh is is the thing yeah that seems like it could backfire in in a number of ways (laughs) um yeah so I'm just going to bury this poor sap, but I thought yeah. it was a very interesting little event. To get. Extremely, <laughs> extremely. That it had the option for unprovoked biological warfare against my vassal. <laughs> the unprovoked biological warfare episode. <laughs> <laughs> On pausing. Okay. I am known for dedication. 
Hey, we won the peasant upper. Mazel. Mystical knowledge. Locked in a room, strange powders on the burning fire provided overpowering heat, smoke, and smells as I tried to feel the things that lie beyond the world of senses. I do not know how much time passed before strange, indecipherable visions of light, pulsing sounds came to me. Imagination? Or a glimpse of the divine? Is there even any way to tell? <laughs> My options are, I need to try again to see if anything is different. You continue to experiment. Or, interesting, I'll record my findings down, which gives me 100 lifestyle. I, my curiosity is going to be the death of King Patriot. Uh, I need to try again, see if anything is different. Clearly. Um. Got a kid to marry off. Real mystical knowledge. As I experiment more and more, I get a clearer and clearer grasp on it. It is as if I can now summon the presence I feel when I start my little ritual. It offers stability and comfort as the chaos of the world swirls around me. So I can have this is what I have been seeking. I gain the trait wise man, which gives me plus one thing. Patriot is known for his unconventional but practical approach. Or I can get hardly anything divine, but very relaxing. I lose 56 <laughs> stress and become resistant to stress by 20% for five years, which is actually very tempting. That is extremely tempting, actually. This is, I kind of love that choice because there's like this modern, like you would, you would think intuitively that like some, something quasi mystical or, or fully mystical would always be better, but just like str the, the actual real world benefits of meditation <laughs> might actually right, be right. better. Yeah. That said, I think, yeah, so Wise Man has a little star at the bottom of it, so it's something that you can advance and improve if you get the right events going forward. So I think I'm actually going to to take the this is what I've been seeking and get the trait Wise Man. Um, that makes so sense. So that I can try to improve it later on and just see where it goes. Oh, okay, whereas the stress relief option is basically flat. Like, it's good, but it, it is what it is. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, makes sense yeah. to me. Uh, so that's that's my, and uh, now I have a decision available to me a hold mystical communion you are the only one who truly knows i will reach for the presence of uko and transfixed ecstasy uh and so i can spend piety on this and gain 300 learning divine guidance for five years which also helps with stress uh it doesn't do anything to it immediately but it helps make me more resistant to gain and accelerates loss of stress in addition to giving me bonus martial learning. And then it says there may be unforeseen side effects. <laughs> <laughs> That's, but, this became like a drug commercial so suddenly. But <laughs> but the benefits do sound lovely. Yeah, well, and so I'm going to, I have piety to spend, so I'm going to spend some. I begin in peace. Groovy. I'm positive. And I do mean groovy. All right, well, I got communed with uko uh, it just says you got the 300 experience and divine guidance for five years so this time <laughs> no unexpected effects apologies we have a very angry dog no worries i managed to just barely silence the angry dogs on this side so <laughs> it's like <laughs> they're I will try to silence no worries Well, dear viewer, it's like the dogs are talking to each other on stream, albeit in slow motion. <laughs> well, this dog has uh, now become my captive little co-pilot. Uh, it is it is moments like could. this that I wish we did video. <laughs> uh, well, then I would have to wear something other than my pajamas to do these streams. So. <laughs> I mean, says, says you, buddy. <laughs> I, uh, if only I could appoint Absinthe here to be my chancellor. I think she would do better than chief and troll for me. 
<laughs> I would be so down. And I, oh, that, I mean, yeah, okay. Like, big brain is making your own ruler. Galaxy brain is putting your pet in the game and putting them on your council. <laughs> well, so in some of the content in Crusader Kings 2, it was possible that you basically became, like, frothing mad. And one of the things that could happen there, there were a number of possibilities. One of the things that could happen there is that you could make your horse chancellor. I believe the horse was usually <laughs> named Glitterhoof. <laughs> stunning. Stunning. And shockingly, tended not to have a particularly high diplomacy skill. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> I know it's shocking. All right. All right. I can now unpause again. Okay. Ooh, something's, something's happening. A helpful warning. I received a missive, a missive, I should say, from High Chieftain uh, Uljoy of uh, Ustyug. I'm, I'm getting better at this, but I'm still really bad at it. It claims that <laughs> that uh, Chieftain Seraphima, my chancellor, has requested support in a plot against me. There is nothing I value more than loyalty, Uljoy's letter reads, hence why I share this with you. So I can confront her, uh, I can publicly accuse her, um, which allows me to... So maybe this is you. your... I, I allows me to rightfully imprison her. Um, although the other one said something different, so maybe it would have been my crime in the other case. Anyway, uh, or we can say, the High Chieftain can't be trusted. My vassals have my support. This gives me two traits. Protected vassal honor, which makes my vassals like me, fair enough. And liege looking away. Hmm. Which makes it easier for them to plot against. Me. Right. What the hell do I have a spy master for if these are my. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> hmm. I mean, clearly what you have as a spy, a spy master for is to peep on your wife <laughs> and your son. I'm starting to think that the three of them are in cahoots and it's all <laughs> if if X tube existed in 912 uh, let's just let's let's just confront her um because th this whole it being easier for people to do I, that's I that's the last thing I need in these in these waning years of my rule um I'm not gonna publicly accuse her I'm going to confront her privately because i don't really want to spend the uh the uh, prestige so let's do that okay back to the war i mean i assume we'll find out what happened with this what were you gonna say i was gonna say i you know it only just now occurred to me to wonder who it was that you stabbed because that <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hadn't occurred to me i was just so relieved it wasn't her i <laughs> i mean the corpse that had smallpox had a character sheet right <laughs> Yeah, there was no character sheet for this person. It's like jazz. You have to think about the people you're not stabbing. <laughs> when I present High Chieftain Old... What were you going to say? <laughs> no, I'm just still laughing. Okay, solid, like solid. When I present High Chieftain Oljoy's letter to you, Chieftess uh, Seraphima, it is, the, uh, it is a first met with confusion, then anger. You believe his word over mine? Have I not always been a loyal servant? Her indignation plants a seed of doubt in my mind. Perhaps I acted too quickly. I should make amends before I ruin this relationship any further. Uh, so I could say, I, I actually, I wish to reward your loyalty, in which case I pay her money and I gain 35 stress because I'm greedy. Uh, or, <laughs> or, she likes me less. Possible outcomes, um, public expression of gratitude. <laughs> Um, which which makes me spend 150 prestige. That's not great. Insincere apology. <laughs> I gain disrespectful vassals for 10 years. Um, oh, and either way, I gain 60 stress because I'm arrogant. Is that what that? That is correct. So I, no, there is nothing good in my life right now. Um, <laughs> so you know, this has been a, a, a ruler for you who has just had a particularly hard Run. Yeah, it's true. Girl Helgi, not an easy life. How bad is my stress currently? I have already forgotten where to look for that. Sorry for being such a noob. Um, uh, so, where you currently have your character sheet up near your character's right shoulder is a little mouse in that. Your character's right. 
Like, like the man said. Okay, so my stress is is fine. Um, well, <laughs> well, it's about to not be. So, <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I'm in I'm in perfectly good health, but I'm not young. Um, <sighs> yeah, I'll pay her the dang money. All right. <laughs> He's a sucker again, this guy. Let's let's continue the war. The only f- it physically pays you to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's you know, it's like it's like damage boosting at a speed run. You like, I have to do it, but it <laughs> oh, it hurts. Okay, let's do it. It's just like saying. In fact, I wish to reward your loyalty, but instead saying it like through clenched teeth. Like, in fact, I wish to reward your loyalty. <laughs> Throwing no. a purse full of money at him. <laughs> Nothing would give me greater pleasure. <laughs> uh, I can do a martial lifestyle perk, so I should probably do that real quickly. There being a war and all. Mm. Man, my siege is going very slowly. I'm gonna have to make up some here. Uh, so it's fun. I'm gonna gain the trait gallant. That's cool. Marshall plus two, prowess plus four, monthly prestige plus twenty percent, attraction opinion plus twenty. That's lovely. Nice. Congratulations on your gallantry. Why? Thank you. I well, I'm already prestige. gallant. I'm already gallant. I like, forget that. I <laughs> that that shit. Old news. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, reduced retreat losses or increased naval speed. Um, and I'm... siege weapon effectiveness. Ooh, that is nice. Yeah, let's do that. Which doesn't help if you don't have any siege weapons, but right, right. you get some siege weapons. Right. Goes without saying. You may be hearing more dogs, by the way, so uh, sorry if that's if that's bothering anybody. They, they are relatively low down in the mix. They are in dog jail, but dog jail is not that far from where I currently am. <laughs> I'm sorry to bum, every, bum everyone out with the existence of the dog carceral state, but they, they need to learn not to bark at the neighbors quite so much. The neighbors are allowed to exist. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah. I keep telling my dogs that, and I don't think they believe me. <laughs> All right, I think there's about to be a battle. Split my forces. Unfortunate, because they are going to get Vodi from me before I am able to finish taking Onega. That is a shame. Crying. Well, King Rickelfer has won against Duke Bodek of Ostfalen. Hmm. In case you were wondering about that. I, I, you know, it had been on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Top of mind. So I'm going to go ahead and start sieging Rusa because, like, I've been trying to catch this army and they keep giving me the slip. So I, uh, I'll make them come to me. There you go. Well, I don't know how the High Chieftain of Finland's armies are hostile to me because that's my vassal and he's not currently in the hole but something's going on hmm well I lost the Siege of Onet or Siege of Vodi to win the Siege of my condolences <laughs> I'm sorry I, you really shouldn't let me talk okay <laughs> onward you know I was the one that was laughing. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Plus, I can't be stopped now. I've become much too powerful. Oh, well. I mean, it goes without saying. Plus six war score for you. Very cool. Or no, that would be for my leash, huh? Like my, my, my condolences again. Uh, okay, Sway Infiltrators. It has come to my attention that some local commoners are moving uh, to Pikova, the capital of my liege, King Krupelg. Locals, newly settled or not, uh, praising me can surely do no harm to his perception of me, uh, so I can pay them. Interestingly, I uh, don't get stressed by that. I guess because it's about my scheme, so it seems like money well spent. Yeah, yeah, it's not just losing money, it's, it's investing in value. Yeah, let's do that. Unpausing. I really want Senpai to notice me, so <laughs> five, five bucks, can you uh, 
put in a good word. <laughs> There's something deeply sad, but very human and relatable about that. Yeah. Um, I haven't been to many, like, uh, nerd and comic and such conventions, but one of the few I have been to uh, had somebody in a pretty fun Slenderman get up. Uh, who was walking around holding a sign that said "Notice me, senpai," <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was very funny. That's extremely funny. Um, I'm gonna pause for one moment and just make sure the dog situation is all on lockdown. Uh, sure. Excuse me, just a sec. <laughs> the various dog situations are the story of the day today. Viewers see this if not see it. hope you're all doing well today better than poor Rurik the seer anyway when Drew gets back I'm going to make hold down the fort while I pour myself so soft drink I successfully weaned myself off of caffeine, mostly, but still get very stir crazy. I do have a bottle, remaining hydrate. I do. I have a story for you. Oh, so here's what happened. We moved into a house. We moved into a house and uh, it needed some work because some flippers had, had flipped it. And it's like a weird Franken house anyway. The core of it is like 75 years old, but things have been added. And, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it happens with houses. One of the things is the gutters are terrible and they like they spray water in places that cause weird leaks in the basement. It's just it's dumb. So we're, we're finally going to get that fixed. We got quoted from a guy who does gutters. Like, what would it cost to just like rip out all of these stupid gutters and put in ones that don't cause problems? Uh, right. He he gave us a price. He was supposed to come by today. I assumed the dogs were needed to be in dog jail because the gutter guy was coming. But the the text that uh, Lauren got was okay, all done. Uh, and so he had, he had replaced all the gutters in just a completely different house. <laughs> Oh no! Presumably without asking, so I think those other people might not be thrilled either. Um, right. So yeah, that was him driving up and being like, "Oh my god!" Like, like he came out, he gave us a quote, and uh, yeah, he's, he's been there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure what happened. Oh my. Um, that's always the worst is when you're waiting for work to be done and then you get the text all done. <laughs> you're like. Hmm. Sure you're not, champ. <laughs> you are you you have not you've literally not begun um i mean like i've had that happen with like food getting delivered to the rock house but never have i had sure. a home improvement project that i that i had quoted done to someone other than me <laughs> like that's boy i wonder if that's what happened we were supposed to sometime in the last few days uh have had somebody come out to make sure that our ac wasn't going to be leaking through the ceiling anymore so that the people who actually fix the ceiling could come out and do it it's a big ragged hole in the plaster of our hallway ceiling this seems like a good uh, improvement to make yeah months uh now but i i keep on being like you can't just show up i tell the the mm -hmm. realtors mm -hmm. i tell the uh, the people when I talk to them you can't just show up you have to let us know you can come as soon as you get the okay from us but you have to tell us when to expect you and they've been shit about that uh, in the past but this time apparently they've taken it to heart and they've just decided alright well we just won't come because we've been doing this for weeks this little dance and nothing still a big hole in the plaster in the hallway uh, and no word either uh which huh. has been very fun this is after the guy showed up out of the blue at 7 30 in the evening thinking that we had an active leak despite the fact that <laughs> the realtor knew for sure that it hadn't leaked in months we we're just trying to get the ceiling fixed you know for months right and so i explained to him okay there's no leak you know you can go home <laughs> since it's 7 30 in the evening but you know when can you come fix it he was like, oh, we could probably do it tomorrow. So I was like, okay, cool. I will stay home from work so that you can come to the house tomorrow. 
I will arrange for a sub and use my last personal day to get this hole in the ceiling fixed. And then I got word the next day from, I guess, the guy that the guy who actually came by worked for is like, yeah, I'm not sure why he told you that. We haven't even have approval to do that. <laughs> so I just had a day off. Uh, I mean, you know, as if it hadn't been your last day you were using, that would have been mostly a net positive. But like, oh, my God. Yeah. Well, so now I told the, the realtor, I was like, you know, here are the times when this can be done. Yeah. And I and you tell me when they're coming. And so that was supposed to be what was going on, you know, with the uh the leak inspection. But yeah. such luck. Um now that we've done a little home improvement corner. <laughs> uh, let's get back to the war. We're at two pips. Is that intentional because war or is that something the game did? I have zero control over the speed, so if oh, you funny. didn't change it. I didn't it's change just it. The game. I sh- I sure as shooting didn't change it. Okay, let's let's start time at three. Let us do it. I will go drive these invaders out of our turf. Pay no attention to the occupied territory behind us. <laughs> I think I have successfully attracted the attention of the enemy army. I also think I'm going to finish this siege before they can do much. Um, oh, they are they are sieging me. Okay, that's. They are sieging Vanky. Ooh, and that is actually going to finish fast. Um, can I get there in three months? Yeah, let's do that. Oh, till death do us part. My dear Prebyshek, I might not have loved you, yet I feel <laughs> you're passing more acutely than I ever thought possible. That is, that that sentence. <laughs> what a generous spirit Jarl Helgi has. <laughs> Eat your heart out for sale, baby shoes never worn. <laughs> uh, you were always there, my constant companion. I mean, she was always somewhere. Did I take Did I take you for granted? There are so many things I left unsaid. Well, <laughs> she was always either here or the next room over. Yeah, I feel like there wasn't actually a whole lot I left unsaid. Um, yeah, I feel like you said most of it. Yeah, well, I gained 10 stress and she's dead. All right. Well, before we unpause, I am going to refresh my beverages real quick. Yeah, sounds good. Should not take very long. No problem. So I think math, math, math. Oh yeah, math, math, math. I probably need to just let them finish that up and then go for them. I'll ask Adam when he gets back. Adam Adam knows this video game, but I think finishing the siege is probably not a bad idea. Did I already mess that up? Possibly. Because this is the capital, right? Or it's like a, it's a more important location than... No, that's the capital of Novgorod. I feel like Vengi is a less important location. They're just kind of picking it off. What are they picking off? Uh, Vengi. They are sieging Vengi. Okay. Which... They being an th- army of 2,466. Yeah. But there's also this army... Oh, that's on, that's on, that's your war, I think. So yeah? I don't know what's up with that 571, folks, because that's my vassal, but they're hostile to for- that's interesting, because the thing is, I can stomp this twenty four sixty six no problem. But if these other two are joining them, then I'm in some trouble. Okay, hang on. I can, I, I did figure this out. He is allied to High Chiefess Virga. He is. So he is on her side of your war. Okay. And then because I'm at war with High Chiefess Virga's liege, that army is also hostile to me, despite being from my country. Got it. And what about these homeboys on the boat? They're an enemy army. They are from Ussel. And so they are defending against you. They are directly targeting you. Me, okay. So I probably um, want to finish this siege before I mess with... So this siege is where? I, I had I'm relying on your stream. Here. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So I was sieging down here. Um, in, uh, in what do you call it? And Rus. Okay. 
They're sieging up here in Vengi. Okay. I could and get the there. War is... The, war is, the war is the war is the war is over. Uh, what what are we fighting for? That's a really deep question. I'm trying to take some territory from the Kingdom of Rusa. Okay, so what do you have claims on that you're trying to press? Where I currently am. Okay, so is so is it Rusa more? Im- is the only one. That's right. So is it more important to finish that siege? Uh, I think so. Okay. Uh, especially since it looks like you are going to be punching about at your weight. Yeah. If you head up there. How long do you have left on your siege? I think it was ten months. Oof. Yeah. Boy. Uh, but you're not going to get there in three months if you head up to Viangi now. I think I can get there like, in two months. You're... Predicted arrival, oh, really? two months, it says. Yeah. Oh, but okay. but my oh, con- that's a nice feature. I forgot about it. It is pretty cool. My concern is not getting there. My concern is getting ganged up on by the math, math, math. You know, look, it's it's like they have a slight edge, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, if you take that then you may just trade. Like, you may send your armies up to Viangi and siege that back while they come down here and siege, siege Rusa back. But you will basically force them to act because you could win by holding on to Rusa for long enough. Years, probably, but sure. theoretically. You could win that way. Whereas, I don't think they can win based on just holding Viangi. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do this thing. The other thing, of course, you could do is once you finish taking Rusa, you just start sieging the rest of this stuff because if you hold it, they can't reinforce from it anymore. True uh, enough. Yeah. Okay, so I'll and, finish with Rusa. That would probably draw them down. Hopefully I didn't start this over by clicking away for a second, but we'll, <laughs> if, if that happened, we'll go from there. Um, I think if it was paused, you're fine. If you issued the move order and then it was unpaused for any length of time, you may have abandoned. Well, well, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm also unmarried now. Um, oh, right. Yeah, indeed you are. Which is a problem, technically. So... <laughs> We're having technical problems. <laughs> <laughs> I have gotten my move. You got one now? You may take your time. I think I am I'm good on the war front. Okay, cool. So you, of course, make the time. But I should. All right. I'm remarrying. Whew. You're also implacable. I am. Oh, God, I did move away. Oh, why did that? Uh, That's not great. I, you know, it happens to all of us, I think. A challenger. Oh, come on. (laughs) You have grown old and weak, King Petri. The time has come for you to step down. My brother, Chieftain Valto, appears and uh, approaches me in front of the whole tribe, proclaiming his challenge for all to hear. I will rule the kingdom of Finland. Sorry. I'm going to read exactly what he said, which is, I will rule Kingdom of Finland from this day forth. (laughs) Articles are for cowards. This is exactly why you're old and weak. Yeah, I, uh, he is 38. Uh, and has seven prowess. I am 46 and have 12 prowess. I have a 66% chance of winning. But if I just go, uh, then he gets to take the kingdom anyway. So, um, and I think this is the same guy who did this last time. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I think that he backed down last time he challenged me. His traits are fickle, callous, ambitious, insightful thinker, holy warrior, child of concubine, herbalist, and scholar. So he, you know, Rurik the troublemaker, he is not. <laughs> sure, sure. So I will say in my 46-year-old old and weak man voice, apparently, <laughs> is his contention. Put some steel behind your words, boy. You know, 
38 year old boy that was well played that was as i i like the way you embodied both of those characters no notes please continue <laughs> please for the love of god continue <laughs> <laughs> no that's not what i did not i did not mean no, it that I, way no i know you didn't i i was just uh self-deprecatingly reflecting on how how long i think oh he didn't back down this time challenger my brother valto hefts his sword and takes a step towards me the whole tribe is gathered around us excitement and fear heavy in the air I raise my spear and attack. Dodge on. Or sorry, dodge. Press on. Faint. Ugh. With a quick slash, Volto slices a deep gash in my leg, and as I stumble, I realize it is over. The tribe is not cheering for me anymore. Curse you. Well, I am no longer king of Finland. Well then. So, wow. Yeah, Finland, the map has changed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I that is not the outcome I expected like remotely yeah I wish I knew what made that possible I guess having a strong claim maybe not sure anyway I am now back to being Poyanma uh, and I mean I've held on to a decent amount of it I lost Biarmia entirely just an independent ruler again so that whole war was a waste um, the High Chiefdom of Finland, the High, uh, the Jarldom of Uppland, uh, the Chiefdom of Oland are all independent. The High Chiefdom of Savo is independent. The High Chieftain, High Chiefdom of Yamajoka is independent, and then the Kingdom of Finland consists in its entirety of the county of. Yoanulu. The uh, county that I named after my wife. That that hurts the most. Well, I cannot currently declare war on anyone because I have armies raised. Sure. But I think I might be going to war with my brother soon and curse him forever uh, for breaking up my my kingdom which will split in two as soon as i die uh, because it has two high chieftains in it sure man one in three chance i wonder if i can do any sort of schemes all right well he has kids this took a dark turn very quickly how well, can I, I mean, how, him, yeah, sure, sure. No, I follow, I follow. Killing him is not in itself the, the solution. Right, because then the kingdom goes to his kid. <clears throat> it's interesting, but he does not have any vassals. He is hmm. not my liege. He did not get to be the Finland that I was. Right, right. I'm wounded. I'm sorry. So, man, this war just got a lot dicier too, is the thing. Yeah, I was going to say, like, is there some portion of your war he now inherits, or is that still your war and now you just have less to work with? Uh, the second one. Great. Yeah, fully the second one. I figured at least it would keep Finland together, is the thing. Right. But it did not. No. I think we're going to struggle some. Well. Hmm. Did I lose men at arms here? Well, not exactly. I'm just over my limit for minute arm. Don't know what that means. Okay, well, my marshal is a vacancy currently. So I should fix that. I guess Valto was my marshal. I am the best commander that my 
new country has, but also I have an open wound currently. <laughs> so right. Maybe don't want that. That's rough. My deepest, deepest Yarl Dolences. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good neologism. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess we just nowhere to go but forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless yeah, this is a, have. unless this is officially the part where we start save scumming. I think all there is is to see what happens next, right? I mean, I, I, I'm resistant to the idea of save scumming for this stream. Uh, I am not too proud to do it. Uh, sure, sure. During single player play, although I often put it on Iron Man just to prevent myself from the temp <laughs> to take the temptation away. No, I agree. I mean, this is this is we are we are telling an emergent story together. So you know, if something really, really bad or really, really stupid or both happens, I mean, like even if one of us were to were to just completely game over, we could jump into the person yeah. of someone else and keep going if if we feel it. So yeah we could do we could we could body hop next time we start we could you know be like all right well this was a learning experience <laughs> that too that too Try again from a different angle <laughs> yeah i'm I'm down for any of the above but i feel like the ball game is not lost yet in no, this case no it's uh much more complicated for me than i thought it was going to get uh i'll say that but for sure uh yeah i guess let's uh just unpause and see how it goes uh, and I will do my best to murder Valto in his sleep. Yeah. If I may be of any assistance, please let me know. I'm really good at stabbing people. <laughs> How are you at stabbing sleeping people? That's the important thing. Uh, this person may have been sleepwalking. It wasn't clear. So I have at least adjacent experience. I like the idea that you just like murdered a servant or something and then it was just not even a thing. And the the plot beat was just that it was like a bonding experience like that. Right, right. Oh, darling. <laughs> and they say romance is dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting this siege all the way over, so that is not great for my war. God, I'm, I I am I am not a smart man, but I know what love is. I was gonna make a I'd do anything for love <laughs> but I mean you stab somebody so I clearly would do like anything though yeah, I could especially now I was gonna say I could hire more mercenaries without going into debt but then I would be I would have I would merely have no money I I would be careful with the money that you have left you are significantly reduced in your uh, capacity at the moment it is true uh, we'll see how this goes because again I'm capturing I think I will still succeed at this and I'm capturing a much more important point than they are so yeah. unless there is they will probably be able to start up a new seat by the time you get there but again it's a matter of like do you stay in their territory sieging the stuff that matters for your war score more than that's going to matter for theirs and make them come back and try to fight you or right. do you try and head back up you've taken Rusa they now have to go do something about that and maybe you can catch them split up sure you know and... all right well uh if we could bump back up to game speed three yes sir and get going okay i did catch up to them and i think i am favored in this battle we named one of their champions so that was good groovy love it love that for you I want a battle. Nice. The slaughter at McKelly. <laughs> I like that. I love that album. Well enough in the battle. Yeah, it's just it a slaughter. Back. Yeah. Uh, it becomes an Amon Amarth album. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, my daughter-in-law, uh, uh, Prebranya, uh, has given birth to a daughter. Um. His name is currently Bjorg. I mean, I'm sticking with Bjorg. May you grow strong and wise, Bjorg. 
good to start when you are. I think I'm good. We go siege back Vodi. Or try to. And then hopefully, by the time I finish this war, King Valto will not have amassed more troops than he currently has, 738. Yeah, here's hoping. Because I'm pretty sure I still have a claim. No, I have no claim. How do I not have a claim on the King of Kingdom of Finland? For yeah, that makes no sense. How can that be true? I uh, I will try to figure out some way to declare war on him because fuck that guy. Yeah, truly. Yeah, okay. As as predicted, they are sieging more. Belusero. They are splitting up though. Yeah, which so if you finish yours, yeah, then you can start picking off those. Yeah. Might be able to, yeah. My daughter-in-law has given birth to a son. Different daughter-in-law. Um, oh, Helgi, family name. Yeah, let's do that. Don't curse him with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is a chance to get it right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Everything's going to be okay. Just superstition, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this is not something a, a, a Jewish family would do. <laughs> living relative and all that especially one as uh obviously cursed as this one Pardon me. salud uh, well it's a long siege but bring my kingdom back Man, i am suffering crazy attrition really yeah i'm not sure why what happened here um oh did you run all the way out of supplies maybe what do i do about that you have been there for a while yeah uh well let's pause it and have a look uh, if you mouse over the skull uh, to the left of your eye there, <laughs> it just doesn't uh, they're not ominous at all is it just hidden behind too much maybe uh, click on your army okay. oh there we go that's gone uh, and then you hover over that attrition rate yeah lack of supplies you have run out of supplies can I do anything about that other than give up? Uh, you could station besiegers and then move the rest of your army back into friendly territory. That might give them the opportunity to gain supplies. Sure. Um, station besiegers is a button down at the bottom. It splits your army. It'll leave the minimum number of people uh, that can maintain the siege. So okay. You can move everybody else uh, off that spot, maybe back to Holmgarth and Mm -hmm. definitely have so the 847 is that's the besiegers force. gotcha gotcha and the 40 14 you can move back to your capital where they will be able to hopefully uh and they'll be a little bit over the supply limit even so you may need to split that army again to yeah recover the supplies well this sucks all right <laughs> let's proceed yeah, uh, having taken too long to, to siege uh, is a, a real first crusade move. It sucks especially because it was a misclick. It wasn't even like... <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. brutal. Yeah. Oh, Lover's Pox, that's cool. I slid between the sheets to join. Petra, that's my new wife. Uh, horrified to her. Yeah, horror, horror gotcha. Um, didn't I have Lover's Pox, though? Uh, well, I mean, we can find all the way out no i didn't uh, you're i think i've somehow avoided that um you do you have oh i do oh, okay well then yeah this yeah. is totally on me um so she's i mean whatever this guy this guy this luckless schmuck okay yeah, here we go. <laughs> really okay so your supply limit in holmgarther at least according to my view of it is mm -hmm. uh 2120 Mm -hmm. uh, if you click on the county itself you can see what the supply limit is uh your tribe of home garth is there i think you uh, no? brought up your character sheet oh. i did somehow oh gotcha all right so you can leave a maximum of 2915 troops in that uh, area and they will recover supplies okay uh any more and they will not 
up splitting your forces and moving just even to the next barony over yeah will do the trick all right onward into this disaster this war went bad virga i swear virga just makes things go bad for me yeah no uh she is the gadfly that has been <laughs> uh, dispatched to increase your misery. Spouse, divide and conquer. Uh, reminder to the viewer that my spouse is less than half my age and uh, has some extremely badass but painful looking scars on her face. Yes, that's right. Uh... Let's see. Chieftain Holfer has been actively supporting Chieftess Christina in her independence effort. However, my wife has a plan to change that. Trust me, the things I could tell Chieftain Holfer would make him disavow Christina in an instant. Uh, so I can say, make sure Holfer never supports Christina again. Uh, or I could say, could you make me look like a better choice? Christina. Yeah, let's enhance his opinion of me. Yeah, do that. Side note, if I'd remembered I'd had lover's pox, I would not have remarried this, this poor lady. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, there are significant mechanical disadvantages to... To not being married, being yeah, married, yeah. But you could maybe have married and then you know, certain traits will let you choose to be celibate or something. Well, I mean, that sort of happened now, unfortunately, not not before Lover's Box became a thing. So, right, oops. Right. All right, good to go anywhere. Going. Nope, we both clicked it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I insist. You first. Every time. Uh, I, I don't think I have said this on a particular stream before, though I know I have said it to you, Drew, before. Uh, that um, <laughs> my wife had this wonderful uh, turn of phrase where she said there's a cronk shaped hole in the wall that all the other himbos are trying to fit through <laughs> all at once and have gotten stuck <laughs> that is that is the truest poetry right there alright let's see I have a son come of age let's find you a wife preferably one that's not particularly closely related to us yeah that'd be good uh, that air Oops. didn't think that was my air i thought i had my air sorted this is uh a real disappointment <clears throat> i know the feeling i really i really do <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, 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 sooner or later you have to get lucky when you roll the hereditary dice right I, I sure I sure hope so. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah, my court physician is has not even come to look at my wound. Hmm. Which strikes me as not especially great. Alright. Um uh, and then I was gonna see oh hey lucas i didn't see you there good lucas lucas by the way thank you thank you for watching and sorry if you've been watching a long time without being acknowledged but uh went ahead and said uh no prince of persia hang on that didn't happen <laughs> we are not safe scumming here so that means you have been watching a while sorry again for not saying hi but uh glad you're here still early yeah uh let's see persia currently doesn't have princes uh it is a split between the Farsi, the Hamadan, the Amadid, the Alvadid, the Khorasan, the Rai, and the Isfahan. I don't believe more than one of those rises to the level of kingdom. Anyway, back to hmm. my own little mess here. <laughs> You're not the only one with a mess. Let the record show. Okay. But yes, we have decided there is no oh. there is no safe scumming this run. Oh, you got an event? What's up? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> I will I will 
try to let you know now that I have successfully paused it. <laughs> Marshal con or sorry, marital confidentiality. <laughs> hmm. I'm contemplating whether to share something with my wife the next time we are by ourselves, away from listening ears. The things I've learned about High Chief this lady would be of great interest to her. I feel like we like each other. Oh, and it gives me stress if I keep the secret. So yeah, it sounds it. sounds like you should confide. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, what? Oh, that's why my my heir, my primary heir, has the personality trait chaste. Uh, so my line may or may not continue. <laughs> That's rough. That's rough. I'm pausing. Let's do it. Two months left in this seat. And then I get to try to race back over to Onigata to get them. Another lifestyle perk. I get these rapidly enough, at least. Yeah, that's good. Six. Wash your hands. Reduce chance of illness. I don't know that I'll get to hold a body before I die, especially if this wound persists long. I'm pausing. Got a son. Sampo. Mazel. My realm will be as broken glass. <laughs> uh, for Vodi. All right, the siege is wrapping up. Uh, well, we're paused. I was like, why isn't it advancing? We're so close. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then I, well, then I, I have been reading some Kafka lately. And, uh... <laughs> the stream needed to be more Kafka-esque, said Adam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you read Pixelated Boat, comic, webcomic artist. Had a thing about... Uh, I have seen some of that person's tweets but i don't think i've ever seen the comic there was a good one not too long ago about uh, uh gregor samso trying to do stand-up and it's like have you, you, ever, you ever awake from from unpleasant dreams to find yourself transformed into a, a horrible vermin and you know the crowd goes that's never happened to anyone but you your problems are not relatable to us <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh i'm pausing <laughs> i uh I, I did my undergrad at Tulane University and after Hurricane Katrina delayed the start of my sophomore year, uh, an anonymous donor or donors um, had uh, donated for a like um, creative writing fund. And the mm -hmm. idea was that they would um, bring authors to campus every year and have a free and open to the public talk. Uh, and so, like, Salman Rushdie came one time, uh, and, uh, the particular to, to our interest now, um, Toni Morrison, uh, came huh. one time. And, uh, so I was able to go and, uh, you know, hear this talk, and there was, like, Q&A, you know, like, afterward, and, uh, somebody asked her, uh, Somebody said, uh, you know, what, how did you arrive at writing magical realism? And uh, her response was, well, I take issue with that question. I didn't start writing magical realism uh, because I feel like magical realism is a term that only gets used for authors of color and colonies nobody talks mm. about kafka as being magical realism uh you know and so i reject the label and i that stuck with me because until she said that i had been categorizing kafka in my head as magical realism <laughs> i didn't know 
the history of the use of the term or when it came about. Because, yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> and so I was like, that, that fits. Those are two words that apply to much of what Kafka wrote. There's magic and it uh, is and it is realist, especially in like a social realist sense, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, you know, so like, I think she had a really good point. <laughs> no, totally, <laughs> totally. The valence of that stuff with, I mean, it, it's true with, with genre writing in general, I think. Yeah. Um, the, the, the gendered or racialized valence of stuff that gets done by people who are not white men. Um, but that's, so that had not occurred to me that, I mean, like, of course, the metamorphosis is magical realism. Like, like in what universe would you not call it that? But I've never heard it called that. So, right, exactly. Yeah. And so, and, and I realized that that label, I had applied that label in my own head, but yeah, I hadn't heard anybody else do it. And so I don't call Toni Morrison's writing magical realism, uh, you know, nowadays, but I do call Kafka's <laughs> writing magical realism nowadays. And some of it is, yeah, some of it is more magical realist as, sure. as we might think of it than others, right? A lot of it is just, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for sure, the metamorphosis, like whatever, if it, if it means anything, it has to include that, right? Yeah. Well, and like, and then there is stuff that is like, you know, doesn't have, you know, the sorts of bending of reality that we would associate with like Gabriel Garcia Marquez or something but like it's also like in the penal colony doesn't have anything specifically supernatural about it but it does follow a lot of the logic that we would associate with you know kind of magical realist storytelling where like the old commandant buried below the tea house has a plaque prophesying his return. Right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that's a very, stuff in there. yeah, that's actually an extremely Marquez gesture, right? Like in, a, in another context anyway. Yeah. I'm good to go. If you are, by the way, I am too. I just can't talk, do anything else at the same time. Understood. So, okay. I have to keep the pause. <laughs> well, One the... linguistic task at a time. One. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> I, uh, this is this is a, a a problem that does not serve me particularly well in my day job, um, either. Uh, wish that it were otherwise. Well, you should be getting supplies back. Are you not? Getting oh, I am. Supplies back. I am. No, I'm I talking am. to my army. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> should have been clear about that. Talking to my army. Uh, my counselor died of old age. My... <laughs> yeah. My counselor died of old age, so I'm going to need to replace my marshal real quick here. But of course. Take your time. <sighs> supplies man yeah I, I never remember to keep an eye on them because they operated extremely differently in the previous game and i think this is an, appro an improvement mm -hmm. but there are times when it doesn't factor in at all and then there are times when it is make or break and so i have not gotten a good habit sure sure which is on me So a, host, a hostile army won't necessarily attack you, but an enemy army basically always will. Is that a reasonable distinction? I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And a, a hostile army, if you end up in the same square as them, you are fighting. Okay. An enemy army, the AI handles whether they want to. Or not. Gotcha, gotcha, Often, gotcha. That will mean they want to engage. Okay. Ah, this was supposed to be a very simple war. <laughs> Aren't they all supposed to be? Yeah. Well, and then my fucking brother. <laughs> yeah. Furious about this. Lucas, if you're if you're listening. And if you can respond, were you just in time to see what happened here with Adam's character's brother usurping him in a in in what should have been just like a stupid like 
two dudes mad dogging each other non-event it became it became the event upon which a kingdom turned in in that in that way history really does happen sometimes yeah well and like i really thought i was just gonna be his vassal and i was like well at least the kingdom of finland will still be right right the territory that i have gone uh, gone through the trouble of taking not so not so All right, how goes? Better. We goodish to unpause? Yeah, you were, we're, I mean, we're fabulous ish. Okay. Fantastic. That's a different language. <laughs> and WandaVision sounds. Did you watch WandaVision? I don't have Disney Plus. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, sure. There's no, there's no illegitimate way to possibly access it. Um, my my dog. I don't have Disney Plus. I don't care enough to, yeah, to they, go to the trouble. That's the ticket. <laughs> my daughter-in-law, Prabana, on a more interesting note, has given birth to a daughter. Uh, let's not do a family name. You're right that those are probably cursed. Let's do a good Norse <laughs> name like Sif. That sounds good. Okay. That's a pretty good one. Um yeah, I, uh, I I am not up on the WandaVision discourse, but it is hard to avoid learning something. <laughs> sure, on yes. On this island internet. Yeah, whether whether you want to or not, for sure. Which I think is the whole point of the MCU cinematic universe concept, right? The shared continuity is, is that it becomes unavoidable. And right. I'm not a Marvel cinematic universe hater. I've enjoyed some of those movies quite a bit. You know, was really excited to see Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I think Black Panther and Thor Ragnarok are both legitimately great movies. Yeah, I think they're they're both quite good. Uh, I also really enjoyed um, Winter Soldier and Civil War uh, for different reasons. Yeah, agreed. Uh, it was fun to watch Paul Rudd fart about for a while in Ant Man. <laughs> yes, perfectly uh, enjoyable. You know, uh, I don't know that any of those movies are as good as Into the Spider Verse. Uh, but no. then again, I am a real easy way for animation. <laughs> All of which is just to say that I haven't seen WandaVision due to fatigue and apathy and not wanting to pay for another streaming service. No, totally fair, totally fair. I mean, it was, it was interesting uh, in the context of what we were talking about because it hangs its hat completely on mystery box crap. And um, the ironic thing is that, like, if you go in knowing the so-called twists... It probably pl- like it like it shoots itself in the foot because it's it spends it expends so much energy hiding its premise, and then when there are reveals, they're not twists. It's not like you had one set of expectations and it subverts them. It's that we're confirming what you already knew had to have been true for any of this to make sense. So it just it farts ar- it farts around for like seven and a half of its nine episodes in a way that is Ooh. such a such a poster child example of like the you know the disadvantages of thinking you're a subtle storyteller. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, well, and like, you know, I know nothing about J.J. Abrams personally. I know he's not individually involved with one division, at least I don't think he is. Uh, but that style of storytelling, like, if I had the power to delete people from history, <laughs> he wouldn't make the top five. He probably wouldn't make the top ten. He'd make the list, though. He'd be on there. But he'd definitely make the list. Yeah, like yeah. once, once, once Hitler was gone, and like, like when the when the biggies were, but when you were, when it was yeah. time to pick the B listers for deletion <laughs> from history. Yeah, no, I'm with right. you. I'm with you. I'm with you. No, because that's the thing, right? Like, it actually has a good premise, but it's it spends so much time. You're like, oh, okay, so the premise is this, and it goes, but is it though? Yeah, it totally is. And it's like, why bother? Like, just own it. Do it. Do the thing. Well, know who else is in the show but i really like paul Bettany. he's wonderful uh, and he really gets to flex his muscles in this he does a good job with like you know going through different eras of acting and like oh, he's, he's great mm-hmm. yeah uh i did see where he had so there's the the what is grief if not love persevering <laughs> line yeah uh and so there have been a bunch of memes of that what is blank if not blank persevering and uh paul bettany on twitter <laughs> shared one that said what is the ship of theseus if not the ship of theseus persevering <laughs> yeah that's kind of that's <laughs> the comment this is the best one because <laughs> that's a it's a it's an Ouroboros of memes because there is a separate scene where the ship of theseus is a central metaphor so it's like it's uh, uh 
<laughs> it's weird. good vision explaining to evil vision why they why he should not be evil because they're both they're both visions anyway yeah <laughs> pause now. do it <laughs> For a time, anyway. For a time. Army's movement locks. Okay, now I have to issue my movement locks so that I can catch them in the taiga where I am strongest. You will probably win this battle. Good. I hope so. Please, please, please. On pause. Cool. I mean, the good news is, is that your war appears to have occupied them much more than mine. Yeah, that was kind so of. I've only ever had to fight eleven hundred. It's kind of sort course. of our plan, anyway. <laughs> your, to... pre- your sacrifice is appreciated. Oh. Dead counselor, specifically dead marshal, which is kind of the worst one for you. Yeah, you don't want that. Not in the middle of a war, probably. Yeah. I did give it to somebody who was mad at me for not having a uh, uh, for not having him on the council. So hopefully he will also die. Uh, rid me of this turbulent vassal. And I gotta find a husband for my half sister. Just Jarl things. Know. Just Jarl. Well, I am winning this fight extremely handily, so that's good. Pausing. Awesome. Okay, cool. I won. Nice. Whoop. Marriage proposal accepted. Enemy commands captured. A slaughter and owners. <laughs> And I can still not ransom anybody. Why? Why you no ransom? (laughs) This way instead. Nope. Sorry, I'm negotiating with my NCOs, I guess, for the specific route that we take <laughs> as we march. I was just doing a bit of that myself, so no worries. Oh, I'm pausing. If I could manage to catch half their forces... That would be yeah. that would be lovely. Well, so I don't know what you can see through your fog of war, but they've got five hundred and forty six in Viangi. Oh no, that's sorry. Didn't recognize the banner. Five hundred and thirty they... mm-hmm. away from me. What's their deal? Basically they've got this big blob of forty six hundred soldiers that is in fact two armies of like 24 and 21 respectively and i've got this force of 28 plus these guys who were taking back the previously besieged areas so if i could catch one of those two forces alone i would stomp them but if i take them on together obviously not so much i think their move is going to be to try to take back uh their capital which makes sense um by then i'm hoping i'll be able to re-rally my troops the problem is some of my strength comes from mercenaries so those contracts are going to expire um mm-hmm. so i mean we'll cross that we'll burn that bridge when we come to it sure, yeah well hanging out in tickvin is not a terrible idea because it's not immediately by rusa where they're probably heading uh but it's close enough that you serve as like a rallying point for when the people who are sieging back yangi velozuru uh Vologda. yeah or, no Vologda is fine sorry <laughs> Yeah, and I'll have some warning if they come for me. I, by the way, should say, since you're not watching the chat, uh, Joanne says, finally facing Yoan Lu <laughs> in music notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to zoom in on that so she can see the, oh, the capital of Finland now. It is the capital of Finland now. That happened not the, the way we wanted it to. Finland. Yeah. <laughs> it ha- the capital and the entirety of Finland. Yeah, it, it is both. That happened not the way we wanted it to, but it did happen. <laughs> 
Yeah. All right. All right. Back to it. <laughs> Don't you? He's running into the ground, too. Uh, oh, my Falto. God. <sighs> I hate Falto. Let's take a look at this asshole. We haven't actually done that on stream. Look at this. Look at this smug jack hole. <laughs> Treacherous well, villain. His hair is pretty luxurious, but he has a really disappointing. Terrible hair. beard. Terrible beard. No, the hair. He gets no points for the hair. We are a beard first culture. <laughs> Go into everything beard first. Yeah, exactly. As the old <laughs> saying goes, you get it. This is why we're allies. Okay, shall we? The old ways. <laughs> we keep the old ways in this kingdom. <laughs> in this kingdom, we. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Onward. Uh, onward to glory, onward. or we're the closest awesome. to it we can achieve. Yeah. Onward to you know, whatever. I mean, I'm winning this war. Mm -hmm. It's just taking forever, and in the meantime, I'm worried that King Balto is shoring up his position. That's the way I have to say his name. <laughs> of course, no, like like type typographically, it is it is SpongeBobbed. <laughs> I like this verb. It's very entertaining. So they are trying to take back their capital. I'm going to finish these two sieges. Oh, Martial Lifestyle Perk. Handy. Let's do that real quick. Handy indeed. Um, I don't think I am in danger of messing with you. And I'm going to pause the game while you're doing your Lifestyle Perk. Oh, it was not a hard choice. Raid speed plus 25%. Supply capacity plus 200%. Yes, please. <laughs> please. I would like to starve less, please. Oh my god, there's a lot happening in Novgorod. Wow. Uh, That's me. Yeah, no, I see. I'm happening in Novgorod. <laughs> You're what's blowing up in Novgorod. And yes, uh, Joanne agrees that we are dealing with a jag hole with a bad beard. Um, good news. The first army of Kurosare, uh, which is sieging back Rusa, is starving currently. They are experiencing 4% per month attrition. Unfortunately, the first army of Rusa is not doing any such thing. They are well supplied, but they are also standing one county over. So if you can get your... Uh, besiegers back uh, you know enough uh, bef even like just the month before they finish sieging Rusa mm -hmm. uh, they will probably be much diminished. Noted. Okay. This is this is a good plan. And I am in the process of ambushing the first army of Turku uh, the hostile army headed in to force them. Admittedly it's only 550 people but it is 550 troops belonging to King Balto. Uh, <laughs> so I'm happy to do the favor. <laughs> yeah, I like it. All right, I'm pausing. Onward. Forward. Whoop, whoop, whoop. How have I gained the trait severely injured? I Tell me I've not been leading this army this whole time. Have you? I mean, I must have. I got injured. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm a battle leader. Oh, for the love of... How did that happen? I specifically <laughs> did not assign myself to lead armies. I don't mean... I'm not laughing at your misfortune. I'm laughing at the the farcical... The farcical nature of our war making this session. What? What? How did this happen? I... I if you don't know, the chances of me knowing are negligible. And why can't I seek treatment for my wounds? <laughs> this is why this is why I should not drink port while I play this game with you. <laughs> I could notice that I was leading armies this whole time. Hmm. If this is now a straight edge cast, then oh, by the way, Joanne is laughing at your misfortune. I, I would like you to know. That's fine. And more to the point, she would like you to know. <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing at my misfortune. You know, King Patriot has been a pretty big disappointment. I don't think his son is going to be any better, but. Helgi the Seer has led a very interesting and turbulent life. There, there, <laughs> there are things that have gone well and things that have super not. 
Yeah. That's a pretty good summary. Unpleasant. Okay. Like, well, really, really... Okay. F- okay. <laughs> that was not unpaused very long. What happened? No. Wounded. Deeply cut. Oh, God. Pain shoots up my body with every step, and even the smallest of movements leave me gasping. As I bring a hand up to gingerly touch my wound, it comes away bloody, and I tremble as blood drips down my side. Not to worry, my lord. Your wound is deep, but my knowledge is deeper. Uh, says my decidedly not particularly amazing physician. We've established that this physician has not studied medicine, or at least had not when receiving the post. Yes, he has since gained the trait novice physician <laughs> as a result of treating me and my family as my court physician. So when, when he says that his knowledge is deeper than your wound, that is exactly the opposite of the truth. <laughs> it seems to be. Okay, please continue. Do, do no more than what is necessary. Wounded. Healing. As hey, Arvo upended nice. a bottle of wine over my wound, the pain was beyond anything the injury had brought itself had brought. Please bear it, my high chieftain. It is necessary to dispel the foulness within. Also, bear it is spelled B A R E, not huh. E A R here. So like, take it off. Me. Yeah, he's he's asking me to do a little sexy little strips tease while he's treating me. <laughs> and indeed, after bandaging the wound tightly, it does soon start to heal excellent work arvo thank you you know what we talk a lot of shit we talk a lot of shit about arvo here on here on this stream (laughs) but arvo has come through every time it is counted you know you're not wrong i just wish that he was more reliable (laughs) (laughs) no sure 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 It, it is objectively true that it has been a dice roll every time and you've just been lucky but nonetheless as simulated in this game arvo has has been MVP. I would also say, I would have taken a bad roll on one of those uh, treatments in order to get a good roll on fighting my brother in hand to hand combat. <laughs> and losing your entire kingdom. That's a fair point. Yeah. Where was Arvo then? Got a rod, damn it. Well, and he didn't even. He fixed me up after that. I got an axe wound to the leg, and he didn't even fix me up. His advice was walk it off. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Apparently, he's Chris Titus's dad. Play through the pain, my high chieftain. <laughs> yeah. I'm pausing. All right. I am going to win this battle. I can and see then I'm that. Try to siege the capital of the kingdom. Of I can Kingdom's see that through fog of war because you're in you're in my house. So. Right. Right. Yeah, well, I'll be inconveniencing your your liege lord. That that suits me fine, if I'm honest. That concludes the slaughter at Luga. Uh, I really, really love this this series of EPs you've been putting out. <laughs> contractually obligated to call it. Yeah, much much <laughs> obliged. <laughs> what? I have nothing to contribute. I'm just enjoying. Just, I'm, I'm digging it. Well, and I'm having better luck with the uh, death growl voice now than I usually. I don't know precisely why. Sleep deprivation plus drinking port, but the port probably has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't usually have that much luck going that low and that rough. On our not yet revealed but soon to be revealed uh, podcast project, I definitely drink different stuff based on what voice i'm getting i I will need to be doing that time (laughs) that has to go in the after show for that actual podcast it totally will i've been keeping note of what for which but i actually haven't mentioned this yet so yeah (laughs) all right i can unpause now yeah siege pikova i'm pausing cool well vangi is mine again uh belurzo is is soon to be mine again and then we'll see about picking these jerks off um the siege has 14 months left so i have plenty of time to turn the tables indeed okay what's going on call to war to the amicable chieftain patriot of poyanma king Fend. i call upon your honor to join against the peasant uprising the count of Dassal. all right yeah whatever peasant uprising I got your back from a distance. I'm going to be the goalie here. 
I, I really look. I, I love. I really love what you're doing. Um, I'm all. I'm all about you. Um, you keep doing you, okay? <laughs> That's my attitude to helping the AI in these wars. Unpausing. Hold on one second, actually. Um, nope. Not unpausing. Thanks for that. I'm um, just doing a little bit of force dividing so I can keep resupplying for the madness to come. This is also some place where I might be able to help you if I am still in the neighborhood, uh, you know, when I win this war. And it's 94% currently, so that will happen eventually. Yeah, that um, wouldn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rod Willing. Uh, that wouldn't be bad because um, if, the, you know, currently I'm on track to, to win if they manage to take back the capital. And like, and like, here's what they're doing is they, they have this siege force of 1776, uh, very patriotic, uh, taking it back, which is no pr- which is no problem. <laughs> they're doing the fan dance and playing the violin like fantasy Jefferson in my face so that I'll come after them. And then this 2,400 additional force can join them and, and mm-hmm. kick right. me in the teeth. So, uh, so what I can propose is if I can get to a hundred war score, I can dispatch my army of 38, 31 to tie up their army of 24, 21 before I enforce demand. That would be, so that would be, that would be the truest love that I've ever experienced. At least in this game. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Let's 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 plan on that being the case. If nothing changes between now and then, I'm sure it will take me two years to siege Picola. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Sounds good. Let's do that thing. Uh, we have gotten we have gotten down to one pip. Yeah. Let's go to three. Yeah. Three is good. We've had a lot more speed changes this time than previously, and I don't really know why. I don't either. I don't know if it's a button I'm hitting by accident in my my panic and and fear, or or if it's just that it's I mean, like enough is happening that it's slowing it down automatically. The hotkeys are just the numbered keys. I'm not hitting those. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. There could be alternate ones as well. But yeah, they are rapidly starving to death over there in Rusa. Yeah. Which is which is great. My st- it's slated to take five weeks, so I think we'll be. However, I am going to take a moment to redirect my efforts at swaying people. Oh yeah, good somebody call. Somebody who will actually benefit me if I sway them. I like it. I'm about it. Okay, now let me. Okay, I do have an army trying to siege back. Onega from me, but they're going to take 17 months to do it, so I think I'm probably in there. I'll... Well, I think it's the guy who killed my son. Oh, Jesus. Just died. So, he dead. He gone. It is nice when problems solve themselves. This is so, uh, so very, like, early Middle Ages, like, folklore- Thing. The best person for the job of spymaster now is a lowborn woman named Terry, who is diligent, gregarious, and cynical, an intricate web weaver and albino. That's a little too good. <laughs> it's like perfect. I mean, it's like it's you know it's obviously some troubling stereotypes, <laughs> but but it's also flawless for the Which setting the middle ages are full exactly of, exactly yeah. that's yeah you yeah, know you're a very clever young man but it's troubling stereotypes the whole way down <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the arguments by the way uh at my professional development this morning in that talk i was referencing earlier about this was off mic so if you if it's up to you how much you want to summarize or, or not oh, what the talk was, right, was yeah yeah so the talk was about why Catholics believe what they believe about the Eucharist, and it was all very circular, <laughs> is the perhaps best summary. There, sure. There's a, a lot of work being done in any given statement by the word clearly, uh, and uh, one of them was, you know, one of the things that I, the speaker, you know, who's saying all this, wanted to know when I started looking into all this was okay, but when did this develop? Was it like some kind of medieval elaboration on early church uh, stances? But if you look at the scripture and you look at what early saints were saying and took us through some examples, you know, 
no, this has really been there. It wasn't just some medieval superstition. And I'm like sitting there in the back, and he's he's a uh, uh, the, the the guy who was giving this talk is a, a career teacher, uh, and so was refusing to go to the next part of his talk without getting a question or a comment on each part. And I was like very gritting my teeth to not raise my hand and be like, could I share some medieval superstitions about the sacrament of the altar that did pop up? Because I think you would be interested to hear them. So <laughs> I sure would. Not. I sure would. You got like a, you got like a top five. <laughs> I really wanted to get out of there sooner. But, um, what is, what is the I, best one? If you could, if you had only had, if you had had the chance to share one, no more, no less, what would it have been? So the most sensational one is certainly the one dramatized in uh, the play, the Croxton play of the sacrament, uh, which is, uh, in its context, very deeply anti-Semitic, which sucks. But it's also so weird. <laughs> mm. Because what happens in the play is that this unnamed Jew just starts like making fun of the sacrament of the altar uh the the bread and the wine the host mm -hmm. and uh you know as i guess christians in england which had expelled all of its jewish population in i think the 1100s uh you know just assumed that jews would do just coming up and basically being like ah <laughs> like an 80s movie bully sure uh and so this so this this guy comes up there this this presumably not especially uh sensitively depicted jewish character comes up there and just does like a tight a tight five on christians be doing the eucharist like that like that's that's what this is kind of yeah that's and so okay at one point in this goes to like basically pick up the 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 communion wafer the bread and throw it on the ground but discovers to his horror that it has fused to his hand. What? <laughs> cannot put down or let go the, the the sacrament of the altar by hook nor by crook and starts freaking out as you or I would. <laughs> uh, and the rest of the play is him basically being so scared of having this bread attached to his hand for the rest of time that the Christians who were being made fun of, you know, sort of get their lick back, uh, you know, as some of my students might say, uh, for for the, the mockery and then, you know, lead him to convert, at which point he can then successfully put uh, the sacrament down. I don't think I'm conflating more than one story there. <laughs> If somebody goes to the Wikipedia page later, it's like, actually, it's possible. I read this during my uh, studying for uh, comprehensive exams. So. This, By the way, the structure of this is exactly like a high concept, like 90s, you know, light comedy about a dad who works too much and has to learn the true meaning of Christmas or whatever. Like mm -hmm. where something kind of magical yeah. happens and he learns like, oh, the thing I thought was wrong. Or Jack Frost. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the exact same structure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, but yeah, just a lot more of like, you know, early English theater uh, and anti-Semitism. Uh, but uh, Hooray. Yeah, no, as, far as, I, yeah, as far as I can tell, you know, this was something that uh, was sort of tropey. Uh, you know, the idea that the sacrament would like defend itself against blasphemy, if not always by adhesion, <laughs> you know, uh, but that like. The idea, I guess, was them looking at the the uh, sacrament on the altar and going, you going to take that, Jesus? And Jesus rolled up his sleeves and going, nah, watch me. <laughs> Nobody calls me just bread. <laughs> <laughs> that is well, wild, that one. That's crazy. The idea of like a, a sentient... Uh, not even sentient. Like, like it's you know, it's like an like a a response, like a squid squirting ink. Like it has like this automa yeah. this automatic defense mechanism built in. Well, and so you know, again, I don't want to get us uh, paused here in September of nine fifteen forever. But one of the things that came up this morning was if the blessing of the sacrament turns it into 
the literal body and blood of Christ, then why does it taste, smell, and feel like bread and wine? It's a pretty reasonable question. I thought so. The answer that was offered was, so that we don't have to deal with our senses protesting us eating flesh and blood. Jesus has done us the favor of allowing us to eat the flesh and the blood and taste, feel, smell, etc., bread and wine. He has made himself palatable to us. When in actuality we are consuming the flesh and the blood, we are, you know, given to uh you know experience it and a scientist looking at it under a microscope would find that it was bread and wine i was just like i mean once you have miracles in the equation (laughs) but i don't know the name for this logical fallacy because basically the argument is this totally fantastical thing happens and happens in fact all the time all over the world but you know weekly more some places right Mm -hmm. and you go well daily totally exactly for sure for sure i'm wildly underestimating um you know my religious experience has always been like go to temple on the high holy days so i always underestimate how often very committed believers do this stuff but point being a magical thing happens all the time and you're like well here are all the reasons why it seems not to happen they're like well yes totally it actually doesn't happen as far as we can tell isn't that the best part about it (laughs) and it's like but wait a minute like how is that different from it not happening that's whoa it's yeah the circuit the circularity of it is mind-boggling it's almost beautiful how circular it is like as as a mathematical shape and then it very much becomes like okay so in what sense is it the flesh and blood of jesus if it is chemically and experientially bread and wine like oh well it's miraculously you know but not symbolic or rather not just symbolic the the communion is symbolic but not just symbolic uh in in catholic theology uh you know so you know this is symbolically the body and blood of jesus and it is literally the body and blood of jesus but it started off as bread and wine and it still looks tastes and physically is bread and wine. what is the quality of jesusness that it gains well it's nothing we can detect because it's spiritual right okay. by definition it's something we can't detect no matter because like we can detect what right. the breadness of bread in ways that they couldn't in the in the medieval period for example sure. but but they're like therefore <laughs> it can't be anything detectably breadly like any if 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 we did come up with some scientific way to like detect human essences in like like i don't know like if i baked a fingernail into a loaf of bread or something you'd be able to tell it was mine by some i, mean, I guess you kind of can right you could find dna right. is there dna in fingernails bad example maybe but like anything we can measure gets excluded because we can measure it right 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 that's just the thing is, is that because we can measure it it gets excluded and it's just like oh this is an unfalsifiable claim which religions in general are full of but also like why are you arguing this way Right, exactly, exactly. If you like, if you're going to make the Kierkegaard argument that this is not verifiable or falsifiable, and therefore you must make a leap of faith, you must leap off the cliff and just believe God's there to catch you. I, I mean, it's I, it's not a thing I can personally manage to get down with in my own head, but I have respect for it as an argument. Like I follow it. But if you're if you're saying this is miraculous and not explicable or falsifiable, why then do this like I'm going to own you with facts and logic style? presentation of this thing that has nothing to do with that format it's just so weird yeah well and i think it's the the thing i heard today in particular was aimed at like protestantism (laughs) as so much catholic stuff is right that's the other thing right it's like it's this fight that like not, not that i can't tell the difference between protestant and catholic beliefs but like it's like my issues with on the outside yeah 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 well i mean like the fact that actual bloody wars were not in this part of the world and not at this time but actual bloody wars in history were fought over like does jesus have a a a whole being that is divine and a whole being that is human or one being that is divine and human and like i don't even understand the difference between those two things people like people were told to go to war over that question (laughs) like it's it's insane well and that actually came up during the thing today as well right where you know his argument was is that Part of Catholicism is being able to hold two seemingly incompatible things in your head at the same time and do them both. Uh, and one example that he gave was that God is fully, or Jesus is fully human and fully divine, 
And he talked about all the early heresies in the church were people getting a little too far in one direction, a little too far in the other, and then having to, to correct. I'm like, man, you're glossing over a lot of pain and death there. Like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> pain and death. Oops, just a little too far in this direction. Oh, oop. well, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just turn the knob a little bit this way. Like, yeah, that glosses over something that, that for me, and, you know, to maybe bring it back around to like Crusader Kings directly, like for me, history is absurd. And like, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it's all nonsense and you can't study it. It means exactly the opposite. It means like you look at what people have been subjected to suffering, you know, because of and any and what has advanced things and it's absolutely bonkers <laughs> like and understanding that there is a certain continuity to what people want and how people live throughout history but also that the actual reasons people would give for what they are doing and the way they would describe their own existence is sometimes so fascinatingly alien to anything <laughs> you could possibly think of as important like if you can't if you can't take that step back if you think that it's this glorious tradition that's basically contiguous you're gonna misread basically all of it right. Well, I feel like that, and in a lot of cases, it ends up being the case too, which is the the the, the reason why I stand at such an arm's length, right? Is is that you are taking a conscious step to you know slice things away that you would rather not be there. Right, which is uh, totally. There's an incuriosity and, to it that's to, that's incompatible with study, right? Like, right, and and that is that is it is also a uh, a conscious decision that like I am going to perceive as an attack anything that tries to engage with this part of this history. Totally, you know? this is the hard kernel of like Catholic education versus Jewish education because like. Jewish kids grow up with the Talmud. Like, if it's worth knowing and it's holy, then the whole point is you never stop arguing about it. You have to, you have to like right. read the entire Wikipedia page, edit history of this thing, and be yeah, deeply right. familiar with it. The idea, the idea that anybody arguing against it as an attack is so foreign, right? Because it's like, no, you just you never stop doing that. <laughs> like, right. Well, and there are orthodoxies. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, like, sure. But to to, to get to where we can. I'm positive. <laughs> it just is it's something that I deal with kind of a lot, given the baked in assumptions in some places, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in my day job. And like, I am as functionally irreligious, you know, for the last who knows how long, but um, came up Protestant. So I had a lot of those assumptions, but I didn't realize in a lot of cases how different those assumptions could be. And sure. Now I, I work in Catholic education and it is hard to think on the fly with some of these things sometimes. Yeah. There is, I think a YouTuber we've mentioned before, Sean, has a forthcoming video. I've seen it because he released it for a rough cut of it for patrons uh, about the 1776 report, this ridiculous uh, thing oh, that, God. yeah. So it's, so it's, it's about it. Yeah, it spends very little time debunking its its you know use as a historical document because there's not much there. But then spends a right. good amount of time uh, taking it apart as a piece of rhetoric and compares it to the time that he, when he was a kid in school, saw a quote unquote debate between a creationist and someone who was talking about like you know actual science and knowledge, and talking about how like a, like perceiving new information as an attack and preemptively discrediting people who are going to say anything other than this thing you already think. And like the actual rhetorical techniques are common to all kinds of I mean, the word is reactionaries, right? right? Um, yeah. Well, and, and, and I was going to say earlier, too, that where else you find this is in racists. Totally, yeah. totally. We shouldn't leave that merely implied. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let, us, let us unpause. <laughs> let us, let us. I don't know if we totally brought it back around to anything currently happening in the game, but it's certainly relevant to the but broader setting. And I look... I realized how long we had spent on my digression. We have achieved nearly three, nearly three years of in-game time this session, which is more than sometimes. It's true. It's true. So, hmm, okay. Well, my my second wife is pregnant. Congratulations. I, I think so, but I mean the whole lovers pox thing, and I thought we were sort of taking a taking a break. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, well, may or may not be yours, I guess. Well, so that's that's a reasonable point as well. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Right, we'll, so the war that I was. Uh, called into has has wound down okay i see you're at 98 percent there yeah uh because one second
Okay, they are cycling to move the 639 out. And the... Oh, no, they're all moving out. That's interesting. No, they're not. Well, they're changing their minds. <laughs> they are making a lot of decisions very quickly. Yeah. Okay, I currently have enforceable demands against King Kirapel's Doronega. Uh, I can move my troops toward... Lusa, or let me, while we're paused, we all paused yesterday. Let me see what it would cost me. It would cost me 184 casualties, and I would probably have to fix it. So maybe I won't. Uh, I can't abandon the siege and move to the Barony of Sulzi, right next to where you are, which would allow me to move relatively quickly. See, the problem is I'm hostile to you as well. Right, so, right. I'm not sure what any. I'm not sure what these weirdos are doing. If I can just get everyone to arrive at the same time, I can just stomp them, and then that's probably the end of the war. But they're making such okay. weird, erratic moves that I'm not sure how well that's going to work out. So we'll see. <laughs> I would say okay. So given the attrition that would take place for me, um, I would say that the thing to do is I'm going to end my war. Uh, I'm going to enforce my demands. You bring your folks in, gather your army since it doesn't look like they're coming for you. Uh, and you can stomp them if you can get everybody together. If it looks like you'll need me, I'm just going to move my troops up to Bodhi okay. and leave them raised for now. And you can call me in and I can come to your aid with about 37. Okay. Um, I don't think it'll be necessary, but yes, if you wouldn't mind leaving them there as a failsafe, that would be tremendously appreciated. I would be happy to. You're a mensch, a gentleman, a scholar, an herbalist? No, that's a different guy. Uh, you're a bunch of things. Uh, mystic. You're a mystic. Yes, that's you're what you are. Wise man. Yes, you're a wise man. Force my demands here, and I'll just hold on to that personally, I guess, because why not? <laughs> uh, don't have anything else to do with my time. Get me some control Bodhi. Army back. Okay. Okay, cool. Unpause it. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, a bunch of them. I don't know what they're doing. Heading out, I guess. I guess they saw your guys coming, maybe. They, they well, yeah, maybe they did. Well, I certainly have the greater force at this point. Um, what is my plan here? Hang on, let me pause and take a look at what's going on here. Yeah. So they have divided their forces. I don't know if their plan is to go siege other places. At this point, even if they all stay together, I can stomp them pretty quickly. Um, provided that you don't run out of supplies and that my mercenaries don't expire too quickly so I probably want to move quickly um, I mean, maybe hot pursuit is the goal here um, need for speed hot pursuit wait hold there on what is, is kind of a need for speed here I guess <laughs> there is oh hold on that supply limit is going to be a big problem for me let's not do that um, yeah, if you're mousing over a place to move an army to it, you'll see. Yeah, 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 totally. Going over the supply line. And you can pass through areas where you go over the supply limit, but that's when your supplies start decreasing. Sure, sure. Okay, I think we're in okay shape here. Let's start the clock. And I'm, I'm still not totally sure what their play is, but whatever it is, I'm probably in an okay position to react to it. Most excellent. Let me know if and when. I am clear to disband my forces hanging out at Bodhi because, well, I am not losing a ton of money and prestige every month on them. Mm -hmm. I'm losing some. I can keep them up for a while, though. Sure. Yeah, as soon as I can catch one of these two groups by themselves, which it looks like I can. Maybe hold on. Sway and McKing. 
while hosting lords and ladies from realms near and far. Some opportunities to por to portray my liege, King Curlepeg, in a good light have presented themselves. My lord, pray tell, who is the most stately person you have heard of? Uh, so I can say, so is totally the king. Um, which stresses me out a bit. No, 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 I spend prestige. Got it, totally. Uh, and then the king gains 10 uh, opinion of me. Or I can say, it's me. In which case, I gain 75 prestige and lose 10 stress because I'm arrogant. That actually is more val <laughs> more valuable to me than the opinion of this guy that I'm going to stab in the belly at my first opportunity. Starting the clock. That's very good. <laughs> Whoa, how did those 800 get caught there? That's not great. Okay, cool. They've all arrived. We're fine. Yeah, I think you're all right. Got a champion wounded, but a yeah, my a champion got wounded. That was the worst of it. Listen, I'll be more sportsman. I did. Hold on, they're trying to slink away. They are also now raging Valdai. Or uh, a raiding, I should say. Let's let's stomp them real quick. I don't need nearly all these people, so I should probably. Do that. 1808 of them are running away. Bravely running away, away. That shattered retreat. <laughs> that, sh that, that shambling shattered retreat animation is really something else. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Like, everybody just gets hurt in the arm, I guess. <laughs> it's very arm based combat. It's just punching and it's just a dead arm thing, that like thing that like middle schoolers do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Camp dispute. Frog em. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. After my army sets up camp, I hear a commotion coming from my champion's lodgings. Investigating the disturbance, I find Benked and Heralder in the middle of a heated argument while several onlookers edge them up. We've had this event before or something like it. Um, so I can deliver a speech about unity, 50 50 chance that I gain 150 prestige or spend 75. Um, I can have them whipped for delinquency, which gives me dread, but they don't like me, which is perfectly reasonable. Uh, or I can just, I can just sod off to my tent, which costs me 35 prestige. I'm going to do the coin flip. Let's do that. Um, yeah. Okay. This, I basically think I gave the same speech as last time <laughs> and, and it went well again. We are stronger when we stand together. Cool. I feel like there's probably only one speech that goes with that particular, uh, yeah. event. Oh, totally. I was only speeding through it because... D the dear the 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 viewer the esteemed viewer has heard me deliver this speech already so <laughs> so no need to no need to subject them to it a second time if they are exhaustively watching the archives and keeping up with the lore true true which i mean come on this is serialized storytelling <laughs> i'm sure no one would be uh negligent enough not to keep up with the lore oh perish the thought perish it i say <laughs> Um, our, our, our own Vati's video. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, oh, also additional taxes. I gained 90 wealth. I lost 35 stress due to my greed. My steward's excellent stewardship led to this windfall. Good job, steward. Um, there's also the preaching of some unorthodox doctrine going on. That's fine, whatever. Uh, it's because my soulmate is actually not amazing at her job. Um, Valdi's under siege. We're dealing with that. Okay, cool. I am good when you are good. Uh, I am good. How am I looking on my reinforcements? Um, because, uh, so there's 1808 hanging out over here. I'm not too worried about them at this point. Um, uh, once I, maybe if you wouldn't mind giving me like an in-game month, I want to stomp yeah, yeah. this force. And then if all that is left is well and truly this 1808, then I'm not worried about them. Like nothing they can do is a danger. If for whatever reason I can't get rid of this 483, then I'm still a little worried. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Cool. For what it's worth, uh, High Chiefess Virga currently shows like about a thousand people for her military strength. That's interesting. Presumably her allies offer some that's got to be what's up yeah her allies effectively double that but even if i lose my mercenaries i'll still be better than she <laughs> once i once i stomp this siege force so let's do that yeah uh not immediately relevant but where semagishio used to be we now have the kingdom of lithuania so, oh wild uh, there's some kingifying going by kingification yeah oh hey lithuania looking good We'll talk, we'll talk more about you later, I'm sure, Lithuania. All right, here we go. 
my daughter. Okay, my second wife has given birth to a perfect little baby daughter. Um, great. <laughs> That's a tremendous relief, actually. Absolutely not after an ancestor. A good Norse name. Uh, Anna, Cecilia, Beta, Margareta. I kind of like Bodil. That's cool. I have no idea what that means, but I like the sound of it. Let's do that. Oh, she's quick. Nice. I did. My second wife is intelligent. That is that is one of the. Mm. I figured we we might want to at least roll the dice on a conge- on a on a, on a heritable trait other than lovers pox. So uh, right, right. all right, here we go. Oh geez, outliving a child. Oh god, how oh. could you do this to Rurik? Now wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> huh. Your second son. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. He was a he was blameless, my perfect son. Life did have so much more in store for him. I'm assuming I gained some stress here. I do, yeah. How, if you're hearing uh, if you're hearing plasticky sounds, by the way, that's Bowie demanding dinner. Nowhere near dinner time. I'm sure I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> I feel like all all dog havers know something about that. Okay, my stress is actually fine. I'm such a chill dude. Okay, well that's sad. He did not deserve like, this. It's not really like any of my business, really, if you think about it, who my wife like sleeps with. <laughs> like, you know, if she wants to sleep with our son, like, I don't know, whatever, dude. They're their own people, you know? Like, spirits aren't anybody's son or daughter. Like, they're just, they're just ghosts, man. Okay, here we go. Was, like was Casper anybody's oh I guess he was bad example you know what I mean though man um I said I need to like watch that movie again oh interesting my alliance with uh Chiefess uh Yorlova uh has dissolved because she was yeah okay Rurik my son was betrothed to I believe her daughter and obviously that is off now on account of him being uh dead yeah, it's a, one of the more valid reasons for calling off a patrol. <laughs> this insult will not stand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a very poor excuse. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that, yeah, okay, you can totally disband now. I, I don't think much else cool. can reasonably happen. Well, I'm like, if you need to call me in, you still can. For sure, for sure. We'll be further away. Yeah, no, the war is winding down, me thinks. I can usurp the kingdom of Finland. Yes. Ah! Hell yeah. Do it. Uh, I have a son. Yahawa. Okay. Now let's check out this usurpation. Oh, I need so much more money before I can do that. <laughs> Just for because I can't see it and the viewer can't either. How much money? Uh, I need 500, I have 113, and I am gaining 3.4 per <laughs> month. It's like an actual checking or savings account in, 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 in an actual 21st century America. Um, you're going to have to invest heavily um, in crypto or something. Death first. <laughs> that, <laughs> we, the ETAO TV streaming service insists upon telling you that that was sarcasm. Do not, under any circumstances, <laughs> invest in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I could raid, but like I don't know. That's not a ton of money for the effort, because like it costs me money to raise my raiders, you know. Sure. Uh, I am very, very anti Balto. Okay. Well, now that I have. Put my troops down. Let me see if I can declare war. That sounds good. King Balto. <laughs> I will tell you in the meantime, I forgot to call this out, but I did achieve victory in the slaughter at Valdai. Very nicely done. <laughs> Both on the victory and I'm a tenor, so I can't really do like the cookie monster voice, but I can do like the high raspy demon voice that is often yeah. a death metal thing as well. Yeah. 
Okay, so I can conquer county for 50 uh, piety, so I may be starting that project very soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, I think if he doesn't have any territory, he will also not have a title. That's... I don't know how kingships, <laughs> uh, non-territorial kingships work. I mean, he's only got Kingdom of Finland and Chiefdom of Yoanulu. Yeah. So if I take Yoanulu, I, I, I would have to assume it would be that much easier for me to usurp <clears throat> uh, Finland. One would think, yeah. I don't know what, what you're... <laughs> yeah. Unless he's some sort of burger king at that point. I don't know. Reindeer sausage king. <laughs> uh. Reindeer sausage king. Exactly. Yes. Uh, good. Good when you are. But if you're still plotting, all good. Yeah, I'm trying. I think I'm going to go ahead and declare this war because I think he's only going to get more powerful as time goes on. That's fair. You may not have time to finish it this session because I do need to go within the hour. Yeah. I, I, by all means, uh, having started this war, he only has 717 people. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you so, may finish it this, this hour, then. Well, and, and my broader point was, if we don't, it won't make the biggest difference. For, you're sure. You're, you're not going to lose sleep over the outcome. All right. So, I'm pausing. Let's do it. Looks like they're trying to take the capital back with their meager force. Um, well, that should make it very easy to crush them. <laughs> Like the man said. On pausing. Oh, hey, reinforcements. You shall fall by my hand. Well, I had another one of those things where an event popped up and then went away without me interacting with it before I could use it. So hopefully it wasn't important. Eh, it probably wasn't. On pausing. Meteor hits the kingdom. <laughs> oh no. Extinction event begins. <laughs> All right. Slaughter them. Or 50% war score. And now we just go siege back Yuanulu. Give me my wife back. I'm pausing. Give me just a moment, actually. And this should give me. Uh, Yoanalu personally, which means I can actually move my capital to it. Great. Hey, I got some additional taxes too, so if I need to usurp the kingdom of Finland, so much the better. Boy, this is going to be a longish siege. Oh, no, my forces didn't all arrive at the same time. Oh, this is really bad. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, I don't know why that happened. Oh, that's so bad. Oh my god, it wiped out like a lot of people. Um, I don't know what to do about this really. Oh boy. Well, I mean, sending your other guys in is about all you can do, I think, at this stage or regroup. Yeah, no, we're it's it's, it's actually pause. no, it's actually still gonna be fine. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, your your prediction seems okay. Yeah. You're, you're likely to win. Um, Defeat at the I, Battle of Rusa, but hey. I don't know how that movement got so janked up, but it is what it is. Uh, combining those armies, man. I, I know I've said it before, but it's tricky. The same county, combine them, and then send them there. That is what I should have done. Piecemeal. I was so paranoid was about the... From different directions. And right. Neighbor, like, unless you have a sure thing, you know, uh, definitely get them together and combine them first. But you've got that little plus above cross swords. So, yeah, no, I think we're okay. It's just that that was not my finest moment. Okay, let's do this thing. They're yeah, slinking away. Hurt your ward score a little bit. Not too bad. Not too bad. But yeah, I think you'll probably be fine. Yeah, they're trying to head into Lake Onega, I think, or Lake Ilmen. Sorry, Lake Ilmen. And it's an, uh, the sea. I'm very stupid. Okay, uh, I'm pausing. He sent 61 troops to try and kill my 2,744 troops. <laughs> it did not work. They are on the run. Sorry. Or wait, no, 
Uh, they're back at the seat. Where are your guys going? I, they sailed around in a way that I really did not intend for them to do. I am having some movement oh, control issues. Those, okay, so those guys are in Shadow of the Tree. I was, I guess, talking about your army that you still had control over. I thought you were going to attack them with it. <laughs> I sure did, too. And then instead, they did a very efficient nautical trip around the, the landmass. So, no, the ones who did that were the ones who were defeated. Understood. Understood. Okay. And so you didn't have control over the movement until they got to Bella Lizzie. Understood. Okay. They're 1509 down here in Tickvin. I don't know what happened there, but their movement was going to catch the opposing army doing the same. Well, I'm going to let them siege a little longer and then just catch them. I'm going to let attrition do its thing. Uh, because if I move these gents over here, yeah, I, I should have just enough time to grab them before aware that your 1509 army is also currently moving so it will not end up in the same place as your 1666 got it understood okay thank you for that tip okay let's do this thing go for it <laughs> 50 days left on my siege of yawan a very important siege so much <laughs> it's very very important i i very rarely get uh too invested in the outcomes uh for people after i have conquered them but uh in this case i will make an exception because valpo needs to just i will take him apart coveted literature my lord my Noai de Kaleva approaches me with urgency. A local merchant has a copy of the compendious book on calculation by completion and balancing, but refuses to sell it to you. If you make him see the error of his ways, I would be in your debt. I can spend the money to get this book. I can spend money to get this book for myself. Or I can say that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's worth it. 50 is a lot right now. Ooh, I can enforce demands. I can just end this right now. Righteous. Oh, most triumphant. Wish I hadn't extended one of those mercenary contracts that I did out of paranoia, but hey, it's all right. Uh, You're still not broke, so. No, it's all right. Okay. Let me just start the clock for a second so I can get the resolution of that. There we go. Well, and... Prisoner taken during the siege. Prisoner ransom. Yeah, good to proceed when you are. Yeah, sorry, I'm doing some ransom dancing. Oh, I'm pausing. Dance some ransom. There we go. To the abhorrent Helgi. Thank you. Oh, this one, this one I will savor because this is. <laughs> This is Virga. <laughs> May your years be short and miserable. Too late for one of those, but pretty good on the other. <laughs> you are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So I gain 10 fame. I gain the territory that I wanted. Uh, I gain 10 prestige. Uh, my allies gain 10 prestige, rather, based on their contributions. Uh, groovy. The war's over. Got Rusa. Yeah, Lukey looking really oddly shaped, kind of hugging White Roost there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and like, yeah, there are one, two, three, four, five counties left in the Kingdom of Novgorod that you do not personally control. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was <laughs> worth it. I guess time will tell, but it definitely. Oh, I'm above my domain limit now. Is one thing. Um, yeah, but I think you can delegate something within your de jure realm. For sure. For uh, sure. I am waiting to hear back on a one ransom, and then I will have Yuana Wu. Amazing. Uh, for my capital. Pausing. Uh, hold on, real quick. I just want to get my <laughs> just want to get my delegation done here. Um, you're good, you're good. Who do I grant this to? Hopefully, somebody who is not ambitious. That'd be cool. Um, 
Heralder, you're 41, but you're going to be king at some point, probably. Um, can I grant you more titles? Yeah, okay. Okay, let's continue. I thought I clicked that button, but I didn't. You're already at 41% war score, which bodes pretty well. Yeah. I have gotten another of these perks. So let me get Iron Constitution. Now if I get one, two, three, four more before I die, I will have completed the whole of body tree uh, of the learning lifestyle as well. We'll probably not bother with Theologian, though. So I'll take something else later. Let's see what I can do. But let me enforce my demands on King Bobo. <laughs> do it. Do it. Greetings, brother. Your great appetites are renowned throughout the world. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So be it. Yeah, yeah. And we figure out what we want to give away. Ah, uh, Nislima is probably the one to give out. To whom shall it be? Uh, my brother. Doesn't seem to be the heir to anything. It doesn't claim on the thing like so. Tarhul became my vassal. I can create the Kingdom of Finland, which I can actually afford to do, so fuck you. Kingdom of Finland created again. I'm now my king again. Although <laughs> I would like you to note, I have far less territory. <laughs> uh, I was just noting that. Well, this is, so this is, again, this is the thing where it says, and I, it's very hard not to say it Monty python fully, but it, the map says Finland, Finland, Finland. There are, there are, <laughs> there is, yeah, there are so two that's... pieces of a non-contiguous Finland, and then there is a, another Finland, which is a high chiefdom, not a kingdom, right? There are actually three pieces of the kingdom of Finland because of uh, Sweden. Sweden. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, the, the most important thing is Yoan Lu is yours once again. That is very important. Yes. And, and if you watch the map, what should happen is currently. Ah. Should become my capital. Hey! Beautiful. I'll have the capital of Yoan Lu. Now, that will probably be a disadvantageous at a certain point. But currently, it is not because it is uh, better terrain. Sure. <laughs> uh, essentially, the taiga. So, um, I mean, I still own Olu, but uh, have moved my administration to Yuan. Sure. Uh, and it has more upgrades better on it okay let's see if there's anything else i should really do oh i need to assign my marshal to increase control. <laughs> i guess it's fine i thought it wasn't going to be but it is your neighbor, High Chieftain Petri, has won against Boto, the son of King Kaleva of Finland in the, oh boy, in the uh, Pojmani uh, <laughs> conquest of the chieftain of Yoanlu. So, my brother, who tried to take this from me and still has claims and shit, mm -hmm. um, has apparently... Uh, no, he's in Yoanlu. Can I imprison him? I'd like to imprison him. That seems like a smart move as well as a satisfying one. Does not seem that I can imprison him. And my murder scheme would not necessarily be super well. What does it cost me to denounce him? Uh, oof. 150 prestige and 50 renounce. Steep. 
but I might go ahead and do it because it gives everybody in my dynasty a reason to imprison him. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's give that a try. Now can I imprison him? <laughs> well, I can forgive him, but I still can't imprison him. But hopefully somebody else can. I can vassalize High Chief and Otso. Oh, hell yes. Okay, no, it says I have low county control here, so why couldn't I just stop my, my dude? All right, let's unpause real quick. Yeah, okay. And then repause and see if I can. There we go. Now I can do an impose, which is kind of important. It's going to take 10 years, but. Uh, last thing, let me see if I can now imprison Charlton. <laughs> I sure hope so. Nope. Okay. Unpause. Should get the Duchy of Finland here in just a second. Hey, accept your gracious offer. There it is. I may be able to bribe some folks. To be vassalized. So let me see if this works. Yay. Bravo. Should be coming back into the fold soon. Nice, nice. The army is probably a lost cause. <laughs> do another war for that if I want the Finnish territory that she holds. Oh, she actually didn't take any Finnish territory with her. Excellent. Cool. Uh, what about you? Oh boy. Not at all interested. Oh, because he's like a whole other dude. Alright, well, I'll have to invade Sweden soon. But I think I'll just about have reunified. The only thing I'll have lost is uh, Yamahokia. Uh, who is currently dealing with a rebellion, so maybe once he's finished, I can Let's see. Oh, that's a relief. I'm pausing. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I might let my cash supply replenish a bit before I make more war. Although, I still, I have, this is, this is how, this is how they squeeze you. I got these mercenaries for three more years. So, on the other hand, if there's a quick war I can knock out, wouldn't be right. the worst idea. Uh, that sort of thing would probably be like Vologda or Ustiag. I was thinking about Vologda. I hadn't really considered Ustiag. Yeah. They've got more counties, but they only have 548 troops in one hour. Oh, yeah, that's... So in turn only has 290 troops. I got to march through a sort of neutral realm here, but that's okay. Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. No, you can you can take the, the border county there. Oh, that's true. Vlogda, yes, yes, yes. No, you're right. You don't have to march. Well, I think you can. I don't necessitate it. Well, apparently, I just got a call from Kingston, Jamaica. Oh, that's interesting. I, for one, am interested in the, in what's going on there. Shrug. Well, you know what. Oh, hold on. A crime. Rightful imprisonment again. So again, does that mean declaring war is a crime? or This feels to me like you're going to imprison him if you win. I gotcha. Yeah. I, 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 I can't say uh, uh, with any certainty. Well, here's a way to find out. A life sentence wouldn't be very long for this guy at this point, so... And jail would be so much simpler, frankly. Just being in a dungeon would, would kind of be a relief. <laughs> I don't disagree. And more to the point, I don't think he would disagree. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, we may want to pick this up next time.
if you're at a yeah. decent place to uh to stop a reasonably good place for me i have de jure finland i think entirely yeah i, I have all of de jure finland plus a couple of outlying areas so uh that that does well enough for me in this case and if i can keep from getting usurped by my brother again then i should be able to pass on it up we <laughs> We speak a lot of kingdoms gained and lost, but in this session, it was the same ass kingdom <laughs> that was both. So, yeah, yeah, uh, by the same guy. <laughs> Madness. In the course of about five years. This is a good video game. I like it. Thanks for playing it with me. <laughs> Thank you for playing it with me and for uh, going on some, going down some really interesting rabbit holes and 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 dealing with my stupid ass questions and all of the above. Oh, I think we're honestly doing all right i mean there's going to be complications as we saw this session (laughs) (laughs) a few complications well thank you for tuning in everybody um adam truly thank you as always for being a guide thanks especially to everybody who tuned in live i don't know if you're still there lucas but thank you as always your support is super appreciated um what's next on the podcast tomorrow on the podcast we have uh, we have anisa sanusi from the limit break mentorship program she also did uh ui ux on elite dangerous and planet coaster two extremely different games that both have good ui ux um and uh the time after that we're gonna have chevy ray who made Eichenfell on so those should both be really good um yeah there will probably be another of these episodes at least before that second one happens but anyway thanks as always for tuning in have a good one everybody you want to say goodbye to adam this is you know if you want oh, to for sure thanks for having me and i'll come back anytime sweet see you later later